Kansas Speedway, where race four of the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup ready to go. Our telecast today presented by Dodge Durango. And after the opening three races of the chase, the top three have really set the bar high in terms of results with the Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson, and Kyle Busch separating themselves from the rest of the pack. Folks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. are going to have to start making some noise and then get a little help if they're going to get back into this conversation for the championship. Maybe today's the day. Junior's our ESPN in-race supporter, and he lines up sixth. Hey, Junior, Dale Jarrett, do you have a second to talk as you get that engine warmed up on this cool day? Yes, sir. Junior, our first question comes from our mailbag, and Cody in Boonville, Mississippi asks, being 10th in points, what is your attitude going into today's race, and how do you plan to approach the remaining chase races to get yourself back in championship contention? Well, we just get to, you know, take a lot more risk being uh, that we dug ourselves a hole in Chicago. So we can kind of go for it, throw it all out there, try some different strategy on pit road, to see how it all works out. Uh, last two weeks, we ain't really needed to. We just had fast cars. So uh, hopefully we got another good car today. Junior, we've already seen a lot of action at this racetrack. We know with the, the smooth surface, but not a lot of grip there. And with this new tire and now cold temperatures, how aggressive can you be with this race car today, especially on these restarts where we've seen everybody be pretty aggressive so far this year? I think you'll just, uh, everybody's going to be real careful this first start, I know. But uh, you'll just work your way up to it. You know, you just get braver and braver each time. And as the track, uh, you know, as we run on the track, uh, the grip will get better and the heat will get into the surface and, and uh, it'll get a lot more stable. But it's going to be pretty hairy, I think, this first restart. All right, man, you take care. Have a great day. We'll look forward to talking to you later on. Now, Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Steve LaTarte. Hey, Steve, Andy Petrie in the booth. You have us, too? Yeah, I got you good, Andy. Hey, Steve, following up a little bit on what they're talking about there and how tricky this racetrack's been, what can you do with the race car to try to help that to, to where he can be aggressive with it? Well, Andy, I think that's going to be the key to the day. You know, the balance of the race car, it's easier to drive when it's a little bit tight, a little bit snug, it's more comfortable, but that sometimes can affect the speed. So I think you need to start good and comfortable, kind of let the track come in, let the driver come in, let you know everybody get in their rhythm, and then compare your speed to the leader and just just adjust it and get more aggressive as the day goes on. Okay, just kind of ease into it and uh, do the best you can, Steve. We appreciate you talking to us. Good luck. Thanks, man. My kind of thing. I think I could drive for that, man. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get braver and braver as the day goes yes, on with the yeah. car, too. Yeah. <laughs> So great high definition onboard views for you today from uh, the race in Kansas. Danica Patrick has our GoDaddy on board. And Kansas Clint Boyer's got the five hour energy camera. Kyle Busch has our Toyota on board, and Dave, he's going to have to pass a lot of cars today. And you're not going to believe this, Ellen. More drama for the 18 team as this morning they were the last car out of the garage for inspection. Crew Chief Dave Rogers told me that they made so many changes to the backup car yesterday before it went on the track, they had to make sure everything was tied down. And then Kyle reported a vibration in practice. They flew in another transmission this morning, and then the plane was delayed. It got here late. They were the last ones out. Backs up against the wall. We'll see how the 18 can do, Alan. Wow. Well, be a big test uh, for his championship hopes today here in Kansas, Dave. Matt Kenseth has our fresh from Florida on board. Jamie? Well, no drama for Matt Kenseth over here. He's the guy everybody's chasing in both the points and on track. He's won the last two Sprint Cup Series races here at Kansas, and he won yesterday in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And I talked to his crew chief this morning, and he said they didn't unload great, but they made some key changes yesterday they feel will benefit them today with these extra cold temperatures and this new tire. Alan? Jamie, thanks. Matt Kenseth getting ready to go from seventh starting spot. Jeff Gordon has our sprint on board, Vince. Alan, when you run wide open for as long as they will run wide open today, that puts a lot of stress on these engines. And Gordon's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, told me today that they hope those issues don't affect their team, but he does expect some teams to have engine problems today. They certainly can't afford it on the 24 crew. They're 39 points behind in the championship standings. Alan? Jeff, a two-time winner at this racetrack. Ryan Newman has our Coke on board camera. And Jimmy Johnson has our Chevy on board, Doc. Well, Alan, you know, everyone knows Jimmy Johnson's nickname is Superman. And folks, if you look closely enough at the onboard camera shot, you might just see his cape underneath those seat belts. Now we all know that Superman's weakness is kryptonite. This year, Jimmy Johnson's weakness has been Kenza, especially on these mile and a half tracks where Matt's won four times the Johnson's none. Now in the chase, four of the last seven races are gonna be on this top racetrack, but today it could really set the tone. Is Johnson capable or has he met his match in mild-mannered Matt? <laughs> Very nice. 
We'll find out. Jimmy Johnson lined up third for this race. And our final onboard view of the Goodyear camera rides with Dale Earnhardt Jr., our ESPN in-race reporter. I invite you to check out nascar.com slash race buddy for enhanced race coverage today from Kansas Speedway with 10 HD live race views, live chat, and live leaderboard. And our aerial coverage for today's race comes to you from Goodyear. Everything we learn making tires that face the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Demanding and grueling, certainly fitting descriptions of this Kansas Speedway and the challenge that faces these drivers and teams for 400 miles. Yeah, it really is going to be a challenge. These drivers really have their hands full today here. Is And there's nothing wrong with the racetrack, then there's nothing wrong with the tire. It's just a difficult combination between the two that makes their job extremely difficult today. Yeah, I've been challenging for Goodyear to come up with a combination that will live here because this is one of the hardest tracks on the, on the tire. Saw Jimmy Johnson behind the wheel of his car a moment ago, and there you see him lined up on the inside of row two. All right, fellas, beautiful, beautiful day for a race here at Kansas Speedway. Had a great race car, great pit selection, great starting spots. All we got to do out there is go out there and execute today. Jimmy, you got to take care of what needs to happen out there on the racetrack. Be smart, be smooth. Remember, we got to be here at the end of this thing, Jimmy. It's easy to get out there and throw it away early. We've seen it happen before. That's the thoughts and the pip talk from Chad Knaus to his team and Ethan Marquette. The rear tire carrier for Jeff Burton is carrying our over-the-wall camera today. Ethan, have a great race down there. Good luck. Thanks, guys. I tell them to stay warm, but they'll get pretty warm down there in those suits and helmets and all that. It's, uh, it's a blustery day here. Hard to believe it was 88 degrees in the practice on Friday afternoon, and now it's 58 degrees as we get set to go racing. Yeah, that's never been a, a great combination from the time that we started running radial tires in this Sprint Cup Series. When you, you put that on it and you have that cold temperature and these things really like to have some heat in them to really get the grip that the driver is looking for. So that's why these start, the start of this race and the restarts are going to be pretty exciting. See all those skid marks on the outside of turn two. Yesterday's NASCAR Nationwide Series race was eventful. Yes, it was. They painted the walls black a few times, too. Had to repaint a lot of the lawn. Yeah, that's in the a lot of grass fresh too. Paint. Yeah, even in the grass. All that was fixed up after yesterday. We'll see who the first one is to tear it up today. We heard Dale Jr. talk about building up to it and being braver and braver. You're in a race. You're going to go sailing off into turn one at 170 something miles an hour anyway. How do you be careful at 170? Yeah, it, it's tough. You know, you just have to, you, you don't want to stretch those limits right off. You know, you want to take it as easy as you can. He, he, unfortunately for him, he's starting on the outside. He's a little concerned of what grip is going to be there after they had the nationwide race yesterday. So you want to be as careful and hope that everyone around you wants to be that so you can get this race started on the right foot. Mile and a half track, 267 laps to make up the 400 mile distance today. The fourth race in the chase, a lot of folks saying this could turn out to be as big a wild card as Talladega. Set to go with the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas. Trouble already. Cars in the wall. Danica Patrick. David Rudiman and more down on the grass. And Kyle Busch. Doesn't look like any damage to the 18 car, but might have spun down onto the apron, avoiding trouble. There's plenty of damage on Danica Patrick's car, though. Yep. And she really had two good practice sessions yesterday uh, in the top 16 of, of both of those as far as the speed go, but, but was really solid throughout the practices. Uh, very unfortunate to see what exactly happened and transpired to start all this. It'd be hard for her to make, back, make it back to the pit area when the car is damaged as it is. Cole Witt. Some damage on the 30. Yeah. That is... Uh, that's a very badly damaged race car. Yeah, a hard lick right there. Yeah, it looked like Danica was was basically in the middle of the racetrack. You see, going into turn one, and uh, 
just made a kind of an erratic move, and the car just jumped him, jumped out from under. Well, well, very similar to what happened to Kyle Busch on the first lap of practice yesterday morning, although he was able to just maybe hit the side more than in the front. But the car just got loose as she tried to turn down in the corner. Still lined up outside. Three wide middle. Still three middle. You all right? Kyle Busch. Stay low, stay low, ease up here, ease up, get down, keep coming. I'm not sure if he got maybe tapped from behind or if it's just that, no, I don't think there's nobody behind him, so that didn't happen. It's just, this shows you how difficult it is with these cold tires. You try to turn the steering wheel at all, next thing you know, you're out of control. Kyle and his brother Kurt having to start at the back of the line in backup cars after their crashes here. And yeah, that 18 just goes around. You can see he's just starting to try to make his move to miss the accident. And the car gets away from him. All the liquid trailing behind the 10. That was quite a shot. It yes. was. Yes. It was. That's, that's a hard angle right there. She's okay, but definitely a hard lick. So third in the championship, starting the race and starting in the back in his backup car. And for Kyle Busch, it's already been an adventurous first corner. It just dumped sideways to the apron and uh, just, you know, uh, apron and nose first, obviously. So I'm sure it's up. Talking about that front splitter yeah, and yeah that's so crucial to get sealed off to the ground aerodynamically maybe being bent up by the car sliding from the banking down onto the flat yeah that's the worst thing you want to see happen is the way that car did come off of that for that splitter yeah you really want that thing to seal down on the racetrack yeah very i think it's okay see. though i'm just looking at that I think, yeah see right there you can see how it moved right there just as he went down if you're looking at the 18 yeah. car i think he's okay though i was just watching how that how the hood deflected and all of the the fender bracing i believe you'll be okay I have to take a look there because that's a big part of this race car handling it all for Kyle Busch today. I don't know. I'm a little concerned that it might be up a little bit well, just on that left front. He's going to come down pit road for Dave Rogers and a company to get an up close look at it. But you're right, Andy. Probably not as bad as it could have been. Yeah, I thought it was a what we worse. would think maybe. Yes. While Dave Rogers gets an eye on it, Dave Burns will also. They obviously want to change the four tires, but because Dave Rogers shares your concern about the splitter, they want to get a good look at it while it's in this profile before the Jackman sets it up in an angled position. So they take a good hard look at it. Also, an interesting thing, Kyle was having trouble communicating with them. He says, hey, what happens when I let off the radio after I'm done talking and it beeps? They said it means your battery's dying, man. We're going to change that too. So a uh, good- side hood flap, Tether, get that. Dave We're Rogers making the calls the for him. So they'll replace the uh, the uh, radio that Kyle is talking on as well, presumably during one of these stops, guys. And Dave, that radio is down by his left knee there. So you see Kyle literally holding his helmet down so he can look down against that head and neck restraint that he wears to be able to see what he's doing with the radio and the harness. Yeah, it's not an easy adjustment in trying to make anything to where you have to look down because it just won't allow you to, to get there. And it's difficult if you've got gloves on and trying to, to do anything there. So, yeah, a lot like going a, on. Sounds like a detail got overlooked if the battery's dead yes. on the radio to start well, the they race. they got a lot of other things that. happening. Do we have time to sit? No, go. Roll, roll, roll. Let's go uh, back to Dave. You guys talked about details being overlooked. This team is as professional as they come, but they were in a hurry this morning. We talked about the transmission being late. When the car was finally ready to go, Dave Rogers said to the crew, I think it's ready. And then they spent another five minutes going over the car. So as good as these guys are, it would have been easy to miss something this morning in the flurry of activity. Well, a difficult weekend so far and a difficult start to this race for Kyle Busch. After a turn one, lap one crash, with contact back in the pack, Danica Patrick and others.
little bit of a mess to clean up after a turn one lap one crash gives us a minute before the restart to remind you that later today you can see the American Le Mans series from Virginia International Raceway 530 Eastern on ESPN2. Tonight the Auto Plus NHRA Nationals final eliminations at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. And then next weekend we're on to the sports hometown Charlotte Motor Speedway Nationwide Series Friday night 7 Eastern ESPN2 and the Bank of America 500 race five in the chase next Saturday night on ABC at 7 Eastern time. Well, if people were apprehensive about that today's race might turn into a little bit of a rough and rugged go. Yeah, I'm sure they feel a lot better now. Yeah. <laughs> what happened in the first corner hasn't done anything to make them feel better. A three car accident involving Danica Patrick that uh, has put us under an early halt. Jamie. Well, we saw the replay and Danica looked like you were running in the middle of the track at that point. And where did it go wrong? I don't know. Um, I uh, knew that going into uh, going into the race based on practice and everything we've seen from, you know, everything from practice and cup to the nationwide race that, you know, losing grip was going to be not that hard to do. And, and so I said that before the race, even I said, make sure that, you know, we're on top of who's on my door and who's behind me. And I knew that all that was going to be happening on the start. And I, I had enough momentum to go to the middle because I, I got a run on the car in front of me, but I had to wait past the start finish line. And I mean, I lifted going into turn one and it's, I can't, all I can say is that, you know, I didn't try and do anything. I just, you know, found myself sideways in the middle of the corner and that was it. And it's just a shame because you know, it always seems to be the case. Those weekends where things start to be going better, and, you know, I've had lots of people say you look good in practice yesterday and felt a lot better, and Gibson did a great job. The crew did a good job, and I have an awesome pit, pit road crew. I knew we were going to have a good day there. Things just go wrong, and days where you're not you're not fast, it seems like not, those aren't the days that you get the bad luck. So I don't know. Uh, if I did something wrong, I apologize to everybody on my team, um, but it's a shame. Glad she's okay. Alan? And, uh, Jamie, it was, uh, it was a pretty big hit down there in turn one. So you're just getting into high gear. That little momentum, a little run. Wow, I'm telling you, that thing did jump up. Jump, just jump around so quickly. Yeah, as I watched the replay from outside again a, a minute ago, you could see that there was a car to her outside, and as she went to turn just to keep from getting into that, that's when the car broke loose. And, uh, yeah, it's sure, it, she's the driver, and she's in control of that. But saying it's a mistake, it's, it's something that you learn as a driver. And, uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard lessons. And this has probably been the most severe case that she's been in this type of situation. Yeah, that was just a, the angle of that impact. You can see just how violent it is. Yeah, and just uh, you can see how well that Hans device works uh, that, that was mandated by NASCAR a number of years ago and uh, uh, it certainly helps the drivers in those type of instances. Patrick back in the garage. David Ruderman has also gone back to the garage. Cole Witt has continued after a couple of trips down the pit road. And Kyle Busch has been on pit road about every lap of this caution flag. KB, you got a radio on me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's F4. You got me? Yes, sir. Got you loud and clear. Your left side splitter looks like it might be up a, a hair. Not bad at all. Yeah, I, it didn't look like it was going to be okay to me. And as a matter of fact, if it's up and they can adjust to it, it'll actually be an advantage. In, in what way? Well, because if it, if it knocked the splitter up, then they can let, take some packer out of the front and let it travel a little bit more. That's the direction you'd want to go. They, these, these cars have dimensions that they can't be higher or lower than they can't even actually that, that splitter the, the top of that splitter has a dimension that it has to be to go through tech well, i wish my crew chief would have explained that to me because as a driver i'm thinking oh gosh now this is what i have to deal with so everything that's going to be wrong with the car today is going to be because you told me that splitter was a little <laughs> bit on the left front no well then i'll start working on it and tell you that hey it's even better than it was <laughs> well on the initial start Kevin Harvick and Brad Kozlowski were in the outside lane. Harvick choosing the outside lane. Kozlowski was behind him. They got clear of the inside lane to settle into first and second. Then the caution came out. So now Harvick chooses the outside lane again. And Kozlowski has to start on the inside lane. We'll see if that works to the advantage of Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's going to be the first car in the outside lane. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah I was watching. Kozlowski's got a big run in the middle of one and two. Yeah. On that outside, I don't, I don't know if he can do it on the bottom or not. No, and with, I think the guy in control, is it, that's a big advantage. Plus, it gets you the arc that you need to get into the corner, not turn the wheel too much and carry the speed, just like you were talking about Brad did.
Junior went to the bottom lane, and Menard went around him to the outside to get up to third. It's a good racetrack for Paul Menard, and, and I think Childress cars have found some things that are helping them. He finished second in the nationwide race yesterday. So we'll look for Paul Menard to have a, a, a really good, solid day here. Yeah, talking about driving styles, now this, this track really doesn't pay off an aggressive style, but it does pay off uh, that finesse, and I think that's one thing that Paul has. He can really finesse a car through the corner. I think that's why he'll run good today. Or Carl Edwards was really struggling in that outside lane or just being really careful and lost about four spots there in that uh, first couple laps. And yeah, that's the problem is you if you start trying to be careful, then there's others that aren't going to be that and you're going to find yourself losing three, four, maybe five spots. Brad Kozlowski, Paul Menard, second and third. Brad, of course, the focus of a lot of uh, attention. After the incident between he and Kyle Busch late yesterday's NASCAR Nationwide race and then raising his hand this morning in the driver and crew chief meeting before the race and asking if uh, intentionally wrecking someone was a violation of NASCAR's 100% rule. Something to that effect. Paraphrasing it. That's, that's about what he said. I was in the meeting. So that's uh, pretty close, Al. <laughs> And I think maybe that was done more as uh, getting in someone's head more than what Brad has the idea that he's going to go out here today and, and take Kyle Busch out for what happened yesterday. Not saying that won't happen if you get him in the right or wrong situation, but uh, I, I think it was more just to send a message in case uh, Kyle hadn't heard that Brad was pretty upset. I think he knows. On Pablo Montoya, 42, picking up a spot on Ricky Stenhouse. And now that Carl Edwards has found his way back to the bottom lane, trying to regain a little bit of lost ground in that 99. Big race for Carl. You heard Marty Smith's essay during countdown on the Midwest. Of course, this is Carl's home track from Columbia, Missouri. And uh, he says that it doesn't get any bigger for me than, than it would be winning here. Stenhouse there. He qualified on the pole at Atlanta, fell back some. Kind of done the same thing starting second here today, falling back. See if they can adjust this car for him today. Kevin Harvick started on pole for the first time since 2006 in this race. He's won three of the last six times he started first. Live from Kansas City, Kansas, the fourth race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Our telecast today presented by Dodge Durango. Kevin Harvick started on pole. He's led all of the laps so far. Time for unlimited access to the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup with NASCAR Mobile 13 and unlimited talk, text, and data on the Sprint Network. Kurt Busch had a crash yesterday, started in the back with his backup car, and he's making some progress in these opening 22 laps. Get unlimited access to the NASCAR Mobile 13 app with the unlimited My Way plan. Guaranteed for life and only from Sprint. See Sprint.com slash speed for details. Kurt was aggressive on that restart from the first lap crash. He has been that. I think he'll find these uh, next spots a little more difficult to find getting around them. But uh, looks like the car's pretty decent. But a lot of other people, I believe, are just kind of hanging out, getting a feel, and see exactly what they might have here today. Just cracked the top 20 there with that pass on Mark Martin. Next up, Clint Boyer. So 78 sure seems to have a good car in these opening laps. Yeah, Clint Boyer's really kind of struggled most of the most of the practice time that they've had here. Not been happy with it. Yeah, from the time they started their test session on Thursday with this new tire. And it's been one that Kirk Bush has been pretty decent, and Clint Boyer has had his hands full. Certainly, Kurt's been aggressive in the opening laps, almost has to. One of the things we talked about was, was balancing uh, that aggression against the, the track conditions. How much in these opening laps do you think people are just trying to feel it out? And I'll use Junior's words, be braver and braver a little bit on some, some laps to try and get an idea of what they can do to push these cars. I think you're right. I think a lot of these guys are tiptoeing. And like we heard Steve Letarte say, he's sitting in his car at pipe just to try to keep just defend against some of the things we've seen this weekend and I think that's what you're seeing I think as this race goes on and we get deeper into it and these, these later race restarts you're going to see a lot more aggressiveness and then you're going to see that it's probably not going to pay off for somebody 
Yeah, and as a driver, when you, when you know these conditions going in, you, this first run, you just want to make sure that you don't take yourself out of this. You can't win this race. You can't win the championship at the start of this. But you should, could sure lose both of those opportunities if you get yourself in a bad position here. And, and the drivers that are in the chase, they, they understand that you know, there's going to be some other drivers that are out there that aren't a part of the chase that might be a little more aggressive at this time of the race, and you just have to let that go. You can see now here's some three wide. You're getting pretty aggressive to start with here. How about Jimmy? He got a two for one. Opportunity. Take advantage where you can. They got side by side. Goodbye. So Jimmy Johnson up to third in these opening laps. Now, while we talk about getting braver and braver with the car, a lot of crew chiefs down there wondering what the tire wear is going to be like under these conditions today after the nationwide race yesterday and so on and whether or not they'll go a full fuel run before they begin to see things get a little concerning that right side tire they designed that inner part of the right side tire on this multi-zone tread technology to be a little bit tougher and also to wear a little bit to handle some of the heat and the issues they've had here on this new asphalt and it's wearing doing its job but it's wearing at a pretty high rate and i think a lot of crew chiefs are worried about just that, Al, making a full gas run. The one thing they did say, and I talked to Steve LeCard about this, he said it does give you some warning when that tire does wear out. They will have a little bit of warning. It won't just fail immediately. The driver will get a feel for it and, and be able to get it to pit road. And Art about to lose his spot there. Joey Logano moving forward, 22. Expect Joey to be pretty solid today. He's been really good on these mile and a half layouts. Remember he had that great run going to Chicago land to open the chase and then had the engine failure which of course set his championship uh, in a uh, big hole. And there's Matt Kenseth running seventh. Winner of the last two races at this track. Winner of four times this year on the mile and a half speedways. And right now just uh, riding it out in the top ten in the early going doc. Yeah, when we visited with Matt prior to the race, he seemed very nervous, and normally so. He's normally very patient and relaxed. He seemed nervous before getting in the car. Let's listen into his radio. It's an unpredictable loose on exit, especially in dirty air. Balance is good. I'm just a little loose in, loose off. I just feel like there's nothing to lean on right now. So Matt is just saying basically there is no drift out here. He said, and the car is unpredictable. He's having to be very patient and basically take his time until we can get some more rubber down and maybe get some temperature in the racetrack. Matt Kenseth's style have, over the course of time has really been to kind of, you know, bide his time, wait to the end of the race. But lately we've seen him be very aggressive and try to lead a lot of laps. Uh, but I think you're going to see a little bit of the old Matt Kenseth today because he knows just how twitchy these cars are, and I don't think he's going to make a big charge to the front yet. Yeah, the biggest concern the drivers have, and I talked to them, is that with the temperatures, everything, the, the whole combination made it a situation. You talked, Matt talked about not knowing exactly what he had, and that's their concern is whenever it goes, it snaps from them, and they don't have the chance to recover from that. A lot of times they have a tire and track combination that they can recover from if the car gets a, out from under them just a little bit. But this is, that's not the situation that they have here today, and that's what concerns them the most. In some lap traffic, third place. Brad Kozlowski, too, giving it up to Dale Jr. Really impressed with Dale Jr. in this race team. In this chase as it started, uh, it was pointed out to, in the pre-race show that if Junior doesn't have that engine problem, they've been solid in, in all three races, the way that they've run and how competitive they've been, putting themselves in, in a chance to, to win. And that's what they have to keep doing to go to victory lane. Bernard continuing to slide back. Kenseth now picking up in sixth position. Back to Junior for a second. Dover last week. Some folks want to look at it as uh, a downer. He had a chance to win the race and didn't. Some folks want to look at it as a positive thing. Look how well they ran. They had a chance to win, and they finished second to, to Superman. Yep. Uh, how do you view what happened last Sunday at Dover to the 88? Oh, I'd have to say a huge positive. I mean, they did a great job. They ran fast. They got the pole. They were in contention to win a race. You try not to make mistakes. Things happen. They rebounded from that. And that's what I took from that, that they rebounded from Junior missing pit road that time, came back and gave themselves a, an opportunity in the last 25 laps to win. They just ran up against the very best of all time at Dover. And yeah, Jimmy so, Johnson beat them. Sometimes you just get beat. Yeah. And there's no shame in getting beat to Jimmy Johnson at Dover. Well, Junior in position to try and contend for the win again today. Running third right now behind the previously mentioned Jimmy Johnson and the race leader Kevin Harvick. 50 miles in.
to the 400 miler today at Cantor Speedway. Couple interesting developments in the last couple of moments here at Kansas Speedway. In race four in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, Kevin Harvick's lead is shrinking. Jimmy Johnson is closing in on him from second. There it is. Johnson, after getting around Dale Jr. and Brad Keselowski to move up to second, is beginning to track down the man who's led all the laps so far. Other development, Brad Keselowski, I just mentioned being passed, was on pit road under the green flag a moment ago. And caution is coming out. Got a car off the pace. Turn three. Michael McDowell. Does he have a tire down? Sure looks like it. Looks like he's got a tire down, possibly into the wall a little bit. Maybe just the tire down. Well, we'll follow up there. Right side looks clean on McDowell, so uh, we'll check on that in a minute. Uh, back to the Brad Kozlowski story. Jamie? Well, he warned his team, guys, I think I have a right rear flat. Be ready, I'm coming in. Well, he came in. This is the tire, the right rear that came off. It looks fine. All four tires, as a matter of fact, look fine. And I just asked his crew chief, Paul Wolf. He came off the box and said, we're all good, gave the thumbs up. We even had other teams coming down to check out the tires. So all is good. So what Brad was feeling in the car may have been something else. Yeah, I think these guys have been really apprehensive about this tire wear. And as soon as he felt something he didn't like, he came down pit road just so he wouldn't have a, an issue that got worse. And uh, this time he missed it. I guess that uh, he, just, he was just getting loose and there's nothing wrong with the tire. Well, he's going to have the chance to stay out here and take a wave around uh, to try and get back on the lead lap because the caution came out. Michael McDowell, it, it doesn't look like he hit the wall. But that's not right. Yeah, he probably had a, it looks like a brake line or maybe a seal in the caliper. That's brake fluid that's caught fire on the rotor. And he was stuck up in the outside lane trying to move left to get to pit road. And there was just a continuous line of cars coming by him. And the speed differential between what McDowell was doing and the other cars was kind of an unsafe situation. Yeah, it was just never going to be a time because the cars were spread out so much that at his speed, he wasn't going to be able to, to get down. And so that was the only way to, to get him off of the racetrack and create a further problem. So first round of pit stops here. Recent times, I'd have been asking you how many people are going to do two <laughs> tires. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you're going to see that here. Uh, people are really worried about tire wear. Here they all come. Doc? Jimmy Johnson said the car started off a little bit sketchy, then got snug in the center, and, and late in the run was starting to get free off. Got to expect they're going to do four tires. They were just four laps away from a full fuel run. Jesse just no right sides only. Vince? Dale Earnhardt Jr. says it's a little loose on throttle, expecting to make a four-tire change with an air pressure adjustment. Now on the upper right-hand part of your screen, Joey Logano said he felt a vibration in the late stages of that stop. They also are going to make an air pressure adjustment. Just two tires for Jr. They're going to make a four-tire stop for Logano, and your leader, Kevin Harvick, is down and away as well. Two tires, a little loose in traffic for the 29. Way more two tires than I thought we'd see. Goodness, I'm shocked. It's going to be interesting here. Seven there, just right side tires. Follow up on uh, the tires that came off the cars and what more it might mean as we get ready for a restart after the first caution today in Kansas. Aerial coverage for today's race provided by Goodyear. Everything we learn making tires that face the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. It's very tough and tricky. Kansas Speedway going to be a big challenge today in the fourth race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Our telecast presented by Dodge Durango wrapping up the first caution of the race when Michael McDowell slowed with a problem on his car and couldn't get to the inside. And NASCAR put out the caution to allow him to get off the track. He has taken that 98 car to the garage. Two tire stops. Uh, for the front seven, Kevin, uh, Matt Kenseth is going to be the first with uh, four tires restarting in eighth place. And let's check with Vince. Up and down pit lane, uh, checking on the tires. Uh, some having a little more issue than others. You're looking at the uh, 22. That's Joey Logano. Uh, a little bit of cording on the right front. And this literally is what comes off the tire. You can see it really is a cord, Alan. Yeah, that's what you're worried about. You didn't see, that was not a full gas run. So crew chiefs are still going to be concerned here. 
Brad Kozlowski back on the lead lap with a wave around. Martin Truex speeding on pit road from 15th to the back of the line. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't. Good save. Yeah, my concern with putting two tires on with this, at what we already are seeing with that right side tire, is your left is already going to be giving up grip as we see Matt Kenseth trying to make his way forward here. But it's going to then it overworks the rights even more because that's where all of your grip has to come from right now. And they obviously don't need to have any more working than what they already have. And yesterday, we had a different tire on the Nationwide Series, but yesterday we did see some left side tires giving trouble. Evidently, they're not too worried about the left sides here. Matt Kenseth moves into the top five, though, with his four tires. So rights only on the pit stops for Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon, Eric Almarola, Ricky Stenhouse, and Brian Vickers. Kenseth was the first with four, restarted eighth, up to fifth. And Vickers slid back in the first couple of laps from eighth to 13th, when he had a little trouble getting off of turn two in the middle of uh, an aggressive swarm. Eric Almarola and Richard Petty's 43. This has been a really good track for him. He was a factor in this race a year ago and then had a couple of flat tires. Something got in rubbing the, one of the tires, ended up spinning out, and uh, lost a couple laps on pit road and didn't get the finish that really he deserved the way he had been running. Yeah, he was extremely fast throughout that entire day, leading laps and running right up front, but didn't work out. Jeff Gordon made a huge jump and was running just outside the top 10 before they pitted. See how this uh, works out if they're able to hold this track position. There's a group that's really been running well. Yeah. They've been very solid throughout the chase. Uh, even before that, to, to work themselves into the chase position, uh, they had to have some really good runs for about five races before that. Yeah, they've had fast cars really all year long. They just had a lot of problems getting to the finish, executing. They've started to do some of that lately and, and getting the finishes they deserve. The what if, the New Hampshire race, where he slid through his pit, they had to back up, and he went from contending for the win to finishing in 15th, and that's really been the big setback and, uh, and momentum halter in the early part of the chase. Otherwise, Jeff's been, uh, like you said, uh, you know, great cars running up front. Uh, finished sixth at Chicago, overcame a flat tire, finished uh, fourth last week at Dover. And that sixth place finish at Chicago, it was at Chicago with six. That, that was not really the way he ran. He ran better than that. And that's how actually he's run better than that almost every race this year. They just have not been able to get, you know, either making bad decisions or, and not getting a, a result or circumstances that have kept them from. Update on Jeff Gordon from Dave. On that first run, Alan, Jeff reported that his car was a little bit tight, but it was still a little bit edgy on the back end. Alan Gustafson, his crew chief, said, we got to keep that back end secure. That's why after changing two right side tires, they put the track bar down. Interestingly, the right front on that car showed that inner shoulder worn down to almost the wear marks there. So these drivers came very close to pushing too hard on those right sides and maybe even on the left a little bit, too. Well, there's a couple of things that, that with this tire that, that they're running less camera than what they were, but they're still wearing the inside of this. Things that they're doing, that they're having to make the car tighter, which is going to make it not turn in the center, then that just creates more issues for them. But then they have to go because if they try to do anything to drive around that, then they spin out going into the corner. So they're in a very difficult position here. <laughs> yeah, and the dilemma is, just for the crew chief, you can't just tighten it up to make you feel better because then you're going to overwork that yeah. light front, and then you're going to have a tire issue. So it's really uh, it's a balancing act. I'll, I'll spin it around and give you a glass half-full twist on this. When the circumstances are the toughest, the best teams and drivers rise to the challenge. Matt Kenseth, championship leader, running fifth right now. 
Once it singles out, you're going to have to be really spectacular to pass anybody because there's just no grip. The tire is so bad. When you get in dirty air, it makes it you know two or three times worse. It just about got away from me once, so I just had to cool it. It's like I said, Matt knows how to adjust to this. He, he, he knows how to be aggressive. He's been that way for a few races uh, leading off the chase. But now he's, he knows it's going to take a different style today to be successful. And I want to come back on that, you know, tire, quote, bad. This racetrack has proven itself to be a handful. It was repaved before this race a year ago. And at all of these newly repaved racetracks, the, 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 the type of paving that they're using when you're spending millions of dollars to repave a racetrack, you want it to last as long as possible, is different than it used to be. A lot of high tech and a lot of science has gone into it. Well, that in turn, with the speeds of today's race cars, has given a real challenge to the people that make the tires to have a tire that'll stand up to the punishment. And when they do that, that in turn provides a real challenge for the drivers and crew chiefs to get the great handling race car they want to go race at these speeds against that pavement and on that tire that's built to stand up. And it's always a moving target. The track's aging as we go. It's always moving on, on Goodyear and the teams. Yeah, and it's always something, Ben, here, since we started racing here in 2001, that this asphalt never had a ton of grip, and it goes away in a hurry. So even though it's been less than a year, it's still hard to get a hold of. Kevin Harvick's getting hold of it better than anybody so far today. Started on pole and has led all the laps here at Kansas. Quick reminder, stay tuned for our NASCAR nonstop coverage during the second half of today's Kansas race, presented by Quicken Loans. Race for the lead, Kevin Harvick out in front of a closing Dale Earnhardt Jr. by about four or five car lengths. Yeah, Jeff got... Gordon and Jimmy Johnson closing in on them. Yeah, he's got a few of his buddies coming up to join the party. Yeah, interesting to watch all four of these the driving styles. The 29 and 88 kind of doing the same thing. Looks like they're rolling out a little bit early. And then they really go through, get off the corner well, where the 24 and 48 kind of charging the corner, going through the middle faster. But uh, working really well for Kevin Harvick, Vince. Yeah, Harvick says he feels it a little different this run with the front end of the car, particularly the right front. Feels like he's wearing the tires heavier on this particular run. Gil Martin says they'll look to pit at about lap 81. Exactly what I was saying earlier that I was <laughs> concerned about, that yeah. when you give up, you've got those left sides that aren't going to grip as well. That means they're going to be dependent on something, and that's those right side tires. Harvick and uh, the guys chasing him, changing just the right sides on the uh, only set of pit stops we've had, which happened at lap 44. Third place here. One thing that's obvious, this 48 car has a setup in it that's going to be really good on longer runs today. Comes down to a shootout at the end. I'm sure he'll probably be okay in that. We haven't seen that speed at the beginning of the run yet, but really seeing after 20, 25 laps doesn't give up much. Black traffic there for Jeff Gordon. Hard to judge that well. Another solid day for Jeff. And for the lead, Junior's there. You see Michael McDowell, 98, back on the track. Just came back out of the garage a few laps ago. We watch Dale Junior here as he's been catching Harvick a little bit. Move his car around on the racetrack to where he can get as much of the air on the nose as he possibly can, instead of following in. Yeah, you got trash on the garage, just leave it here. Yeah, about a third of the grill, probably want to work that off as it gets. Stop trying to be in the tire tracks there so he can get as much air as he can on this uh, 88 car, and it's really working well for him. The radio traffic there about trash on the grill. Get a look at it. See you there. I think he got it off there. Yeah, I can't tell if there's anything on it. You can see just right there what how much it impeded his progress, just having to kind of back out with the lap car that was there, not being able to carry the speed on the exit of the corner where Harvick had already cleared that and pulled away by four or five car lengths there. That cost him second place here. I 
have a spell that you went through in your career where you hadn't won in a while. What does that do to you? I mean, it's been over a year since Junior's been to Victory Lane. He's finished second a few different times since then, like last week, where you're in position to win, but it doesn't happen. He had a couple races this year where he was leading, and things happen to the car. What's it, what's it do to you? Yeah, I mean, it's if you're getting there and there's something that you're doing as a driver, then that's one thing. But you, you put pressure on yourself, as we see Jimmy able to take that spot away now. Junior not contesting that right now. But you, you put more pressure on yourself. It comes from the outside. You don't let that worry you. It's that competitor that's inside of you that wants to win so badly. You keep putting yourself there, you know the odds are going to go in your favor to win. So Junior back to third. Jimmy Johnson, last week's winner, up to the number two spot. They're all still chasing Kevin Harvick as we're across 100 miles. Today's Hollywood Casino 400, race four in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup from Kansas. The race for the lead at Kansas Speedway. In race four in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, Jimmy Johnson's got a run on Kevin Harvick here, but is it enough? Doesn't want to give it up. Well, this is, you know, might not want to give up the lead right now either, but you know, this is for learning experience too, for later in the day when it does really make a difference in keeping Jimmy Johnson or someone else behind. You know, what do you have to do to, to make that happen? How many laps can you run up there and not abuse your car? This reminds me of the battle we saw for second place in the nationwide race late yesterday where Brad Kozlowski in the 22 and Kyle Busch in the 54. Kyle caught him really quickly. Looked like he was just going to drive right by. Jimmy did the same thing, but it looks like uh, with Harvick using that outside lane, it's actually working in his favor. I think he is learning something here, Dale. Now, Jimmy actually did lead that prior lap, so if you're keeping track of bonus points for the championship, one for five time. Matt Kendrick at the moment running in fifth. Kyle Busch back in 23rd. Where Jimmy's car is really good right there. You can see he, he followed Harvick in a little high, cut down. He's going to lead this lap too. He might get clear oh, here. In front. Oh, oh. <laughs> Landon Castle thought he was getting out of the way down on the apron, huh? Surprise. I guess. So Jimmy Johnson clears and pulls away from. Kevin Harvick for the lead, Ryan Newman, and now Eric Almarola on pit road for green flag pit stops. Kevin Harvick coming too. Just after giving up the lead, and I suspect this will bring a whole wave of people. Forty-five mile an hour pit road speed limit here. Mark Truex already showed us you don't want to get a speeding penalty and give up all that track position. Here he is, Vince. Kevin Harvick, he's already won twice this season. He's been the dominant car throughout the early stages of this race. They took right sides only on the first pit stop. This stop, it's a four tire change. The balance of the car has been pretty good. Kevin's just trying to take care of those right fronts. Let's go to Dave. Jeff Gordon had been running in the fourth position. He said the car was a little bit tighter on this run, so they're going to make a track bar adjustment, raise that just a little bit to try to help Jeff with the turn in the corner. Other than that, it's been pretty good for Jeff. One thing about this car this weekend, very consistent according to the crew chief. No surprising snaps for the driver so far, and he's doing a great job today at Kansas Speedway. Sunoco fuel in. They'll go to the left side and finish up. Maybe. Bit of a hiccup on that uh, left rear. Just finishing up. Martin Truex in. Michael McDowell and Josh Wise have just taken their cars to the garage. And they're still watching race leader Jimmy Johnson to see when he woes up and comes on to pit road. There's a little radio traffic. There's that radio traffic. And then a little radio traffic on NASCAR race control. One of the race teams reporting tire debris in turn two. NASCAR has spotters around the racetrack. They're radioing back and forth. And when you're a crew chief getting ready to call your guy into pit road, that'll make you hesitate. You're monitoring that. Yeah, it will. You, you hear that in one ear, one ear, and then you know that your gas tank will take you a little bit farther. You're just a little nervous about this tire wear. And when you hear that, you might want to try to stretch it a little bit. Jimmy's coming this time. Caution. Caution for debris. Jimmy's committed to pit road. 
but he didn't get there before the caution came out. Roll on through, roll on. He wasn't at that yellow line before the yellow flag came out. Well, the rule is he can roll through pit road and blend back in on the racetrack with no penalty. Right. He cannot make a pit stop without a penalty. But that's going to cost him some position. track position. Yeah. Yes. He's going through at 45 miles an hour. Everybody else is going by at 170. And that's why we were just talking about when you hear that on the radio, you might want to leave him out there a lap or two. Well, it's funny because it can work two ways. If you get across that line before they call the caution, now you're going you're gonna to be the leader when everything cycles around. Yeah. You can be. It's, gam it's a gamble. But it's a gamble. Yeah. Well, he missed it by just a little. that much. Maybe a car length. Pitting this time, pitting this time. So second caution of the race. Dale Jr. now the leader. And here they come to the pit road. And we check in with Doc. Matt Kenseth said the car is absolutely almost spinning out in turn one, and I have no grips. It has become very, very unpredictable. It'll be four tires, one and a half rounds down, left rear, get it full of snow, go fuel. Jamie. Paul Menard had a great run yesterday in the Nationwide Series, finished second, pretty good run so far today. Three in, tight center, four tires, track bar adjustment and wedge. He's down and away, great stop. Vince? Yeah, Learnhardt Jr., just a hair tight, needs to work on the entry. Slight air pressure adjustment, four-tire change. Joey Logano, Logano just really free off. Again, a four-tire change for the 22 as they race off pit road. Check our pet boys race off pit road. Junior's team, going to hang on to the lead. Now, we'll follow up on what becomes of Jeff Gordon uh, who pitted under the green. He should be going to take a wave around here, but we'll follow up on that. And where Jimmy Johnson blends into line and how this little turn of events also affects the 48. Double it up for the restart at Kansas Speedway after caution that came out just after a few started to trickle to the pit lane. And one got caught just before getting across that scoring line where he could have made his pit stop. Jimmy Johnson had been called to the pit road while they were going back and forth on the NASCAR radio about possible debris. Yeah, you see the green light right here. That's what he, he's uh, kind of keying off of. You see he drops to the apron and the race is green and all of a sudden it goes caution. Looks like he had plenty of time maybe to, to, uh, to turn the car back out on the racetrack. You can see on the left side there the for the pit road light that it had gone to yellow. And once that happens and he wasn't across that yellow line, then he can't stop without a penalty. Can't stop in his pit box. Yeah. So he has yes. to just drive right through. And Jimmy Johnson is going to go from being in the race lead back to 17th place. All right, man. That was good heads up. That was good heads up, Jimmy. Didn't know what to do. You did exactly what you were supposed to do. You did exactly what you were supposed to do. Just follow direction to that point. You did great. They, there was nothing you could do. You were committed. Passing through was the only thing we could do. If we just stopped in our box, we'd been Agreed. Now, the other one's caught by the caution flag. Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, Eric Almarola, Ryan Newman, Jeff Burton had all just pitted under green. But they all got caught a lap down by the yellow, just had to take a wave around. So Harvick's going to go basically from the front few cars to 25th place. Yep. Changes your race strategy from here. Yeah, four of the, uh, the top cars, top 10 cars are starting in the back. So Earnhardt Jr. and Matt Kenseth racing for the lead on the restart, and Kenseth clears Jr. in two. Paul Menard, that neon car, had some trouble getting up off the corner there. Look at him swarm him now. Yeah, stacks everybody up behind him. Oh, Ryan Vickers up out of the groove a little bit there. That's the problem on these restarts is somebody has a little hiccup. There's not a lot of room for him to catch it without bottling everybody up behind him. Are they getting braver and braver here? I think uh, <laughs> they're stepping up a little bit, but you got to be careful. We can see when you try to be aggressive, things are going to happen. And one problem, just like we saw Kyle Busch earlier on in the race, as they go three wide down into turn three, 
But if, if, and this happened to Kurt Busch yesterday. When something happens in front of you and you have to get on the brakes or turn your car, it jumps out from underneath you then, too. So that's why when these things get bottled up like that and you try to take an evasive action, you can find yourself spinning with nothing else happening. So Jimmy Johnson in a hurry to make up some ground from being trapped back in 17th place, Doc. And remember, Jimmy only changed right side tires on that very first stop, which gave him some added track position, he and six others. And so he had 88 laps on the left side tires. When he came down pit road a moment ago, the left front tire did have some cords showing on the inside shoulder. And Chad Canals came down himself and rolled the tire around and looked at it to make sure he knew what was happening. So left front tire, a little bit of cords, but 88 laps more than a normal fuel stop on the left side. Doc, all the information that filters into the decisions you make in whatever situation presents you later in the race. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, Eric Almarola, all there trying to follow Kevin Harvick up through the traffic after getting trapped, hitting under green, and then the caution coming out. Yeah, and Gordon and his team had elected to take two tires on that first stop. Got them some great track position, which they had held on to until they made that green flag pit stop. Gave all of that up now. Jeff Gordon running back in 26th place, Dave. And he was one of the earliest on pit road. Lap 84 was when he hit, and he felt like he had to come down pit road. After the tires came off the car, crew chief Gustafson radioed him and said, well, was a, there was a small spot on the right front. And Jeff said, yeah, I just felt like that for that run, I needed to pit now. Yeah, the problem they have with this new tire, they don't know exactly what that sign is telling them as to how much further they can take that. And so anything that they're feeling here, especially early on, so they know exactly what they can do, is going to be, they're going to err to the, the side of caution for this uh, first half of the race. 39, Ryan Newman there, another one. Same boat, hit it under the green. Caution came out, had to take the wave around. I'm trying to dig back some of the lost track position. And all those wave around cars started at the back of the field. So Dave Blaney there in the seven, he was the free pass car at the caution, and they all started behind him and behind the lap cars. So just now, getting up through the traffic to the point where they're actually picking up positions in the running order. Johnson by Casey Kane back into the top 10. Yeah, this 48 car is showing that it might be you know, the car to beat today. I know Carpenter's led a lot of laps, and he's going to have a, a good car on probably the shorter run, but any green flag racing day, this 48 car is going to be the, the car in team to beat. And even though they had those four showing on the left front tire after 88 laps, they still had the fastest car in that long run. Jimmy running back there now in 10th place while Matt Kenseth, one of his closest rivals for this championship, is the race leader. And Kyle Busch is back in 19th place. There is Kenseth. Now out in front, trying to win a third straight event here at Kansas. NASCAR.com slash race buddy has enhanced race coverage from Kansas Speedway today. 10 HD live race views, live chat, and live leaderboard. 150 miles in, Kenseth at Kansas again. 107 laps complete here at Kansas Speedway with Matt Kenseth out front. You know, he's led 231 laps coming into this race. He's been out front now 16 laps today. It should certainly be a sight that we are used to seeing so far in the chase. <laughs> Hello from inside the Quick and Loans ESPN Pit Studio. I'm Nicole with Brad, Rusty, and Ray. Let's take a quick five-hour energy rapid recap of what we have seen so far today. Crash on lap one with Danica Patrick, but Kyle Busch in the 18 started 42nd after a backup car forced him to the back of the field and was caught up a little bit in this one. Yeah, just a little bit. There's some concern that his left front splitter might be bent up just a little bit. The crew doesn't look too concerned now. The car is running better and better. He's working himself up in the field a little bit. It's up to 20th right now. Tire wear. 
big concern today. Yeah, it was a concern earlier in the day, but it should get better the longer we run and a little bit more rubber gets down. That and these teams know how to manage this tire wear, too. They'll be talking to their drivers about how hard to push, but balance is going to be critical. You don't want to be on the right front or right rear. You want to be using them both today. Should get better. In fact, we actually heard drivers on their last pit stop getting reports that the tire wear was indeed better just after the second stop. Team's getting more and more comfortable as the day wears on. Like these guys are saying, the, the balance is getting a lot better. Should get a little bit better as we go throughout the day. Alan? Nicole, thanks. Jimmy Johnson continuing to pick his way back from getting caught coming to pit road by that caution flag, passing Paul Menard, and Johnson up to sixth place. You better hope he doesn't get any better. <laughs> He's about as good as he needs to be right now. Just passing cars as he catches them. Yeah, yeah that's been tough. I've watched, a, like even Kevin Harvick had a great car, and he's not been able to move forward too much in this run like we've seen Jimmy Johnson. He's actually stuck behind Kyle Busch right now, but, but Johnson can pass him at will. Trouble for Joe Nemechek. Some smoke was trailing behind that car. He is trailing from behind that car. A lot of smoke now. Caution for Liquid and another one in trouble. Looks like a couple of engines, maybe. Landon Castle. Motor. A transmission broke or something. I wasn't shifting. It's still, I hadn't grabbed fourth gear yet. I almost did, but I was. Coincidental problems for Nemechek and Castle have put us under caution for the fourth time in the race. The 35 car, Josh Wise, had just come back out from the garage and rejoined the race. 95, Reed Sorensen went to the garage. All right, there's why one of them blew up. That's an oil pump belt. They won't run long without that thing, I can tell you that. Yeah, you can see right here, Landy Castle must be just coming up off pit road. He's getting up to speed and just let's go. I don't know which car, whether it was Nemechek or the 33, that lost that oil pump belt. Looks like it could have been that 33. It sounded like that, that maybe it was Landon that said that he hadn't shifted into fourth gear yet, but maybe he should have if that was him. <laughs> <laughs> could have been part of the issue. All right. I'm not sure he was up to speed yet. <laughs> well, let's see. Jimmy Johnson in this last run of the race, 17th up to 6th. Uh, Kevin Harvick restarted 25th as the highest of the guys that were uh, burned by the caution and uh, had to take the wave around. Now the highest of those guys is Jeff Gordon, and he made it up to 18th in this run. Yeah, we saw a lot of two tires in this same range here early in the race. We'll see how many we see take two after they've monitored that tire wear on the left side. I have to say Gordon and Harvick are in that situation that they're going to get some of their track position back. Hit road open. Doc. And let's take a look and see if the 48 car will take two tires. That's what they normally had thought about doing was two right side tires. He said, uh, Jimmy said the car a little bit tight in the center of one and two. Now below him, Matt Kenton. Oh my, Matt said it is very, very loose on entry. He takes two also right side, but tight after hits the splitter. Vince. Upper right hand side of your screen, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pulling in. Car's pretty good. They like the balance of it. They are going to make a slight chassis adjustment because it's a little snug. Right side tires only for Earnhardt. Legato says it's vibrating so bad he can't hardly see out the windshield. Again, two tires and an air pressure adjustment. That's a close race off the pit. Yeah. To get the camera to see that one. A lot of two tires this time. Everybody must feel pretty good about the tire wear on the left side. Well, Art Telemetry says Junior ahead of Kenseth. The camera says the same thing. Wow. Wow. Barely. A little less than two laps before the restart after caution here in today's NASCAR Sprint Cup Series 4 and Miler Telecast presented by Dodge Durango. Uh, race off pit road, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the new leader. He coincidentally is our ESPN in-race reporter on the day. Let's just see if we can talk to him. Hey, Junior, Dale Jarrett, okay to talk? Sir. Well, I know from our vantage point up here, uh, looks like you've got an awfully good car again. Uh, how are things going inside there? Yeah, the car's real good. Uh, we were you know, a little bit loose on exit, a little bit tight first half of the corner, but the balance kind of moves around as the run goes. But, uh, yeah, Tybor Cable Chevrolet's been up front, and uh, he's got some good strategy to try to keep us there. Hopefully we'll get a shot at this thing. 
They've got some laps on the racetrack, a little over 100 done now. Any change in the, the track surface and conditions so far? No, the, the tires having a little hard time rubbing the track up. So uh, I think uh, the track wants to do, uh, you know, wants a second groove. We'll get a, you know, get a tire that, uh, that gets a little more rubber down to probably do that. Okay, we're having fun watching you. Keep going strong, buddy. Simple. One to go, please. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. will lead this field of the restart in one more lap. Free Spirits chronicles the story of the Spirits of St. Louis, a colorful ABA franchise featuring players like Marvin Bad News Barnes and James Fly Williams. And among the subjects discussed, the contract that the co-owners struck for the failed franchise that's proven to be lucrative to this day. 30 for 30 Free Spirits presented by Buick, Tuesday at 8 Eastern on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. Jimmy Johnson back in seventh place. I do see these guys, Jimmy, coming up alongside of you and almost past you through that initial box. I think we're giving some up in that initial box. Trying to get a straight shot at our pit box, but if you want me to stay out longer, I can. Nope, I'm saying you need to maintain your speed better. They're passing us. I'm on my life. Okay. I mean, he's having to slow down to get in his box, make sure that he doesn't drive through it or anything like that, or get a speeding pin. You crew chief thinks all that's easy. <laughs> you think it's easy sitting on that box? All you can do is go by the lights that they yeah. show you to set and everything. Well, he's just trying to help him a little bit. Maybe save yeah. just a second or two. So competitive what, in there. Yeah, you what you get do, everything. What you do is you just tell him what you see. You know, it's up to Jimmy to make that adjustment and whether it's going to get him in trouble or not. Junior? with Kenseth to his inside for the restart. I was wanting to see how aggressive Kenseth might be down that inside. He tried to be, but that didn't work too well. Got him stacking up behind him. Crashed, yes. Got one spin in turn two. Dave Blaney, caution's out. Boy, we get to do it again. Yeah, man, as a driver, like Junior got a great start there and got a little distance, and you think, ah, now I can relax a little bit, run my race, and off he comes out and have to do it again. Now, Dave Blaney was on the lead lap in 28th place. Now he's got that uh, support piece from the roof flap hanging out after he got uh, turned around off of turn number two. See right there, and when he comes in the picture, he's already out of control. Yeah, he's in no man's land up there. Not uh, talking about how little grips down in the groove. There's none up there. Yeah, you can see he's really wide all the way through the corner. And nobody got collected there. was a good thing and uh, Dave didn't hit anything so that's another good thing uh, free pass on the last caution trying to catch up on things here <laughs> was Martin Truex that got him back on the lead lap AJ Allmendinger gets the free pass here he gets back on the lead lap and don't expect to see any of the front runners in here unless somebody's really pulling a different strategy move time to go NASCAR nonstop presented today by Quicken Loans Doubled up for the restart. Dale Jr. now with Joey Logano to his inside and Matt Kenseth behind him. Last restart, it was Kenseth to his inside. Matt had his hands full. We're going to be lucky to see 267. That's the most evil thing I've ever drove. I don't think evil is even a word. Man, I just can't do it, man. I just got shoved out and got the clean air last time. I, I can't drive it. I think it might be a word after watching that. <laughs> it's evil said the April car he had here was probably one of the best cars I've ever driven at Kansas. Things change in a few months. Yes, they do. Well, I'm trying to make that inside work. He does. 
Kenseth being very careful through one and two there. Gives up a few spots. He gave one up to Montoya, too. He takes that four spot. And Jimmy Johnson got shoved wide or slipped wide off that corner and has fallen back about five spots. No contact, but it just uh, just took the air off the rear. And uh, Kurt Busch in the 78, right up underneath that quarter panel. And still just kind of filling the thing out through this where we've seen you be. I, I don't think these restarts are the, the strongest point for this car. Double and I see struggling back through there is Kyle Busch. Had his hands full on these restarts, too. This Montoya. is the car coming alive right here, though, Montoya. Passing Denny Hamlin for third place. And Matt Kenseth trying to pick up some of the lost ground. Matt was talking about when he got shoved out into clean air, his car ran okay. But uh, back in the, the traffic on the restarts, he had his hands full. It was evilist. Uh, here now, things have sorted out a little bit, single file. Maybe it's a little more manageable. Maybe. When he was leading the race, we heard a couple of radio communications, and, and Jerry Punch was, was saying that this car still wasn't his liking, even when he was out front. It was He was loose going into the corner. Doc, this is not a very happy driver today, even though he's running in the top five. And, and normally, Matt is not very animated. As you know, DJ, on the radio, he's normally very calm and composed. But the, today, you can hear what he said, the evilist. He said the car seems to be okay for six or eight laps after he gets away from all the turbulent air on the restart. Then about lap seven or eight, he just starts becoming unpredictable. He said it gets very loose on entry. It bounces on the splitter a time or two. Then it won't turn. It gets tired. He said it takes about six or seven laps for it to happen. But then he said, I just got my hands full. He was just hanging on before the caution came out the last time just to be able to get on the pit road. Got his hands full as the points leader. Casey Kane, five, Brad Keselowski, two for a spot. Remember, Keselowski pitted under green early in the race while running well and then got trapped by a caution, had to take a wave around, lost all of his track position. Yeah, his car hasn't been that good either. We saw it. He strike out right at the beginning of the race. Looked like he was going to be real strong, but then started fading. Actually, thought he had something wrong with the right rear tire. It was so loose, they made a pit stop, and they didn't find anything. It was fourth when he pitted earlier. Riding with Clint Boyer back in 15th place. Right behind Clint, Kevin Harvick. 29 car, Kevin started on pole and led all the one of the first 81 laps, Vince. Then after giving up the lead to Jimmy Johnson, hit it under green, got caught by a caution flag, and he's been trying to dig out of that hole ever since. Yeah, they certainly were not happy to see that caution, I can assure you, with their communication on the radio. Uh, talked about the fact that cars are changing when they get out of that clean air, and Harvick's car was very good when he was in the clean air, but now that he's back in traffic, he says it is really tight, and that's what they've struggled with. Crew Chief Gil Martin says we used the first half of the race to get the car so uh, Kevin can make a charge in the second half of the race. Well, we're right there at the halfway mark. He doesn't really have the car he needs just yet. Vince, thanks. I think it's another case of that clean air just kind of heals all the, the, you know, the, the things that the car is doing wrong. Kevin Hart, when he was leading, he was pretty good. But then once he gets back in traffic, his car's not very good at all. And one thing that I am seeing that a lot of these drivers and teams that are taking the two tires, if that gets you track position up in those top six or seven cars, those two tires work well. If you're back further than that, then where you're having to really try to move forward and pass doesn't work nearly as well for those cars and they really seem to struggle seeing tires or cars that got four tires that maybe weren't as good as some of those cars passing them now had someone down in the garage telling me that clean air is like 
a coat of paint on a rusty nail. It hides a lot of the flaws. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to say. And on a day when conditions are tricky, the frustration's going to begin to show for a lot of these drivers. Yeah, and the other thing that makes it difficult, bouncing back and forth between two tires and four tires, making adjustments there, trying to adjust to whichever one you have, can be a tricky situation too, Andy. Yeah, it can. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, that he started out tight, I'm sure. Just like we heard Steve Letart say, they were going to start their car out tight. But it was going to cost them some speed. I think that's what they did. They, they really paid off early in the race. I think they need to start freeing it up. And they've been reluctant to do that because we've seen so many problems. Joey Logano started fifth. Has run in that lead group almost all day, but not at the front until just lately. And now Logano passing Dale Jr. on that last restart. And assuming command of this race, there's the gap. First to second to third and beyond. And from Montoya, back to the championship leader, Matt Kenseth. Hanging in there in fourth place. Jimmy Johnson running back in 10th. Kyle Busch is running back in 26th place. The, uh, the quick take on the championship picture at this point. Pretty solid drive by Denny Hamlin. Maybe the best we've seen in a long time from this 11 car thus far. Yeah, we've seen them uh, throughout the year at times qualify up front and be there for a little while, but always seem to fade today. They seem to be going in the right direction, Jamie. They have been, and I talked to them earlier today, and they said the car has been good this weekend. They were a little loose and a little tight, but they thought they found a nice balance. And he said it's been pretty good for the most part, a little edgy at times, but the biggest part is that he started getting a series of injections in his back to help the pain a couple of weeks back. He said he's like a new person, like his old self, so he was looking forward to making a charge in these final races, and their goal was to get top 10. And we have a big crash on the on the track. We'll go back upstairs to Allen. A couple of them. That's Justin Allgaier in the 51. And Ryan Newman in the 39. I think that Newman was the first car that got out of shape. Oh, what happened? Ryan Newman, seventh in the championship starting the day. But uh, from the way that car was crab walking around the corner, they've got some work to do up underneath that one. Yeah, I think it might have been Algar actually that had the first problem. There is Justin. It looks like he may have blown a tire. See Algar right here coming through the middle of the corner. Watch this. He just goes. Well, no, what a tire. That's just getting loose. loose yeah. yeah, as he tried to correct and Newman, wrong place, wrong time. Just look at that angle. Oh Ooh. wow, it's hard hit. How does Stenhouse get through there? Ooh, barely. Wow. Yeah, look at the way that 51 looked on the right front. I thought maybe he'd blown a tire. Talked about they just Stenhouse just barely got through there. Yeah, got just barely got through on the outside there, and then Newman just almost clipped him from the inside. Now oh, good to see Justin out of that car. Yeah. Second NASCAR Sprint Cup start is definitely not going to finish the way that he wanted. And he was running good, too. He was in the top 15 for a lot of the race, and he was racing a lot of good cars, having a good run up to that point. So caution number six, and we are just across the midway point of today's race. And if you like 
circumstance or, or uh, your numerology, there were 14 cautions in this race last year, and the sixth of them came out on the exact same lap as the sixth caution in today's race did. So this is probably not the last one. <laughs> it's probably not, no. I like deja vu all over again. That's how I said that. You could say that yeah. if your name was Yogi. Yeah. But your name's not, so it's not. <laughs> so we'll give him the credit for the save. Yeah. Free pass going to go to Timmy Hill on this caution flag, and the pit road's going to be open here. So we'll see what we see. Everybody was in at lap 113. Listen, I think we may see some more cars. We talked, we heard these, a lot of these drivers talking about their cars tight as they start to free these things up, thinking that they've got it a little more under control, then they get out of control. A lot of takers here, Doc. Yeah, Matt Kenseth at the moment ago told Jason Ratcliffe said, in dirty air, it's undrivable loose. And I don't know what to tell you, what to raise or what to lower, but we got to do something. Let's see what they do. Right rear chassis adjustment, right side tires, and he goes on the jack down the way. James. Juan Pablo Montoya been very happy with the car this run. Wants to do right sides? Yep, once again, two times in a row. Vince? Dale Earnhardt Jr. says the car is pretty good, just small things that they're not going to sweat. It is a small chassis adjustment, right side tires only, right side tires for the 22 as well. We've got uh, looked like a problem in the uh, pit lane on one of those cars that uh, pitted down on this end, guys. A lot of two tire stops again. And a pit road speeding penalty for Matt Kenseth. Speeding exiting for the championship leader. Well, I saw him get out of his pit box really, really fast and came up on a car. Then he had to slow down. It was the seven car. But I don't know if it was to that point. Too fast section four. 20 car, too fast section four. It's going to be costly. So the championship leader has a problem, and the race leader, Joey Logano, had a little hiccup on the pit lane as well. See, they're trying to get out of here, get this lead, and the uh, tire carrier just didn't quite get clear. Hope he's okay. They have to get those tires and equipment back to the left side of the box before he can leave. He was that, but gosh, not bad from there. Let's hope he's all right. Vince will uh, follow up on that for us as we clean up after the sixth caution of the Hollywood Casino 400. Not a good day for Ryan Newman or Justin Allgaier. Since they got that pit road speeding penalty, why not take the time to come down pit road and try and help that evilest car as Matt Kenseth, the championship leaders, run into some troubles here at the Kansas Speedway today as we're just across the midway point of race four in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Story of the day was the fact that a new tire combination combined with an already very tricky racetrack has a lot of people racing on eggshells. And we've already had six caution flags at this point in the race. Already had six caution flags in the race and a lot of guys have been shuffled from the front to the back to the front through cautions coming out as they went to pit road a lot of other strategy circumstances and we've got it going on again at this point including some of the championship contenders catch up on that in a minute hollywood casino 400 from the kansas speedway we remind you that nascar is celebrating hispanic heritage month through a series of video shorts featuring the stories of latinos in nascar visit viva.com nascar for more So you see Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch now first and second. Very different stories on their days. Harvick started first, led the first 80, 80 of the first 81 laps, had pitted under green, caution came out, had to take a wave around. He's been digging out ever since, stayed out under this caution flag and has gone from 16th up to first. Kyle Busch started at the back in a backup car and has not made a whole lot of progress through the race. They stayed out here to go from 24th to second. Others with troubles. Jimmy Johnson was coming to pit road when a caution came out. It trapped him because the yellow came out before he got to the scoring line. He went all the way back to 17th, started to make his way back to the front, then got out of control on a restart, lost a few positions, and Jimmy is right now running in 10th place. 
Have I got them all? Matt Kenseth's going to go from uh, <laughs> contending for the lead and leading this race back to 30th after a pit road speeding penalty on that caution flag. Yeah, he gets back there. He may have some new words made up again about what his car may do. And as you can tell, it's been a rather eventful uh, first half of this race. The most recent event involved Justin Allgaier, Jamie. Second ever cup race for Justin Allgaier. Big collision with Ryan Newman. What happened out there? I wish I had a good answer for you. Um, you know, we were mining our, our, our own there, just trying to ride. And, um, you know, the car was actually pretty strong, and, and we're running up inside the top 15 at some points, and just turned right. Uh, I got a little bit loose over the seam, and uh, everything seemed to be okay. And, and yeah, it uh, turned right and hit the fence really hard. So, hate it for Ryan Newman. Um, didn't mean to, uh, to ruin their day. Um, Hate it for the, the Phoenix Racing guys, the 51 guys. You know, this is Nick Harrison's last race, and they've uh, they've done a great job and, and give me a great race car today. So we'll go on to Talladega and uh, and hopefully have a have a good strong run with our Brent uh, SS. But I guess this is my wife's worst fear. She doesn't come to the racetrack, and uh, she's always afraid I'm going to wreck while she's not here. So I'm all right. It's uh, We're all good, and, and hopefully we can come back and have another strong run. Glad you're okay. He'll be back in the 51 car at Talladega. Alan? Jamie, thanks, and they continue to work on repairing Ryan Newman's race car as we take a look at the uh, Danger Zone presented by Nationwide Insurance. Kansas Speedway. Mm -hmm. A mile and a half of it, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> In a difficult place. You'll be having fun the rest of the race, huh? Yeah, and there's not a man taking the garage. I hate to see that. Around was Steve, tell him to shut up. I don't think he's too concerned That's about it. That's enough said. <laughs> well. Well, now the roles will be reversed here because the 22 is going to be starting on the inside and the 18 will be behind him. This is true. I'm, I'm quite certain that Harvard's going to take the outside. From the back of the pack on the start to running third right now, Kyle Busch. And Alan, nothing on the radio about messing with the 22, but this previously about staying out and starting back up front. But do you think if I can be a clean air, you can play defense, or do you need tires? I haven't had it yet, so I might as well try it. Now, DJ, to your wondering about whether he's been binding his time, no. The car will not turn. Kyle's been very frustrated with the handling, but they thought we haven't tried it out front just to see how that would affect it. That was the idea. Hey, I like the idea, and, and let's see what it might can do. My concern was if it's as bad as what it's looked like when he was back there, that he takes a real risk of getting run over by these cars that have tires and have been faster most of the day. 31 cars on the lead lap. Free pass at this caution was David Gilliland getting back one of a couple that he is behind in the 38. When you have that many cars still in the lead lap and these chasers look that, any type problem you might have late in this race or something that you can't rebound from with that many cars in the lead lap costs you a lot of spots, which translates to points. And as you look at that restart order, Jimmy Johnson again draws the outside lane. Last two restarts, he's been in that outside lane. He's had trouble in turn two, had to check up, and lost about five spots each time.
Jeff Gordon with a move. Trying to get two for one. That's a great move. He got a great run off of turn two as Bernard Jr. was trying to pass Carl Edwards. The draft here seems to have a bigger effect than some other mile and a half that we see. They're just able to get that run. But it, I think it's more because of how much they have to pedal the throttle on the exit of the corner, and it makes it, if you can stay in the, the gas band behind them, you can really gain a lot of track position and, and time on them in a hurry. Well, this clean air really has helped Kevin Harvick. He was back in the pack. He couldn't pass Kyle Busch when they were back there. This has worked out for him. Brian Vickers, Denny Hamlin, with company from Brad Kozlowski. This is just outside the top ten. Something going on up on the uh, hillside hospitality area overlooking turn one, and you see the drivers racing through that smoke. It doesn't have anything to do with what's going on on the racetrack. And we'll see if we can find out exactly what it is here in a minute. Well, that's going to be unsettling for the drivers to drive through that, dude. I promise you, at 190 miles an hour entering that corner, already treacherous conditions to start with. Somebody telling you everything's okay. Caution's out. And it is for the smoke, and just that, not having the drivers racing through that reduced visibility. There is a fire truck that is, uh, has arrived on scene, and I'm sure they'll have that quickly extinguished. It puts another car on the lead lap. Yep, David Gilliland gets the free pass, second of his uh, laps that he needed to make up, got them both. So the eighth caution flag of the race. <laughs> and that oh, one's no. a little different. That one is a little different. Pit road not open yet because the pace car is uh, still having to collect the field. He's actually sitting on the back stretch. He didn't quite get out there and uh, Harvey didn't get slowed down enough. So he's going to have to wait till this next time to catch up. Hate it when that happens. Harvey's cars are fast out front. He can't even get slowed down. <laughs> Pace car can't even catch him, huh? You know, if we, we, if we, we, we want to, we could have some fun with Brett about that. Brett Bodine uh -huh. driving the yeah. pace car for NASCAR. I have to get up on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pit road will be open this time by, I don't, don't know if we'll see any takers. It's uh, got an interesting mix of the strategies going here. Harvick last pitted at 113, Logano at 139. Yeah, I'm yeah, Harvick almost has to. It'll be kind of lonely down there for him though. Yeah, Kyle Busch pitted at 113 also, but he stays out here. Interesting. Just a few other takers. I thought with all the caution laps, Harvick now might try to stretch it a little further. Vince? Well, big discussion with Kevin Harvick and his crew chief, Gil Martin, as to whether or not they were going to come now or wait for another 15 laps or so when the uh, window typically would open. They're going to make a chassis adjustment here, even though the car was much better in clean air. Uh, it's going to be a four-tire change for Kevin Harvick. They really like the car in clean air, but we're back in traffic. It's been a handful. We'll see what they have the rest of the way. Matt Kenseth also taking advantage here for a trip to pit road. We go NASCAR nonstop, presented by Quicken Loans. Joey Logano trying to clear Juan Pablo Montoya for the race lead.
Bush is wheeling it. But yeah. Boy, he's got a chance for it. Yeah, he had to get completely out of it off of turn two. Yeah, and his brother, Kurt, had a moment there off of turn two with Jeff Gordon right there, and they both almost got into the wall. I don't think Jeff Gordon appreciated that last one. Not up on the bumper of Kurt there. Wow, running look at that. all the way down to the apron. He's really not going to be happy now. Racing for 10th and 11 spots there. See if that one's over or not. Remember, Kurt Busch started all the way at the back of the pack today in a backup car. Here he is racing for a spot in the top ten. See, it's a little bit windy. It's, it's something these teams have dealt with basically since they've, they've been here. Seems like every time we come to Kansas, it's dealing with a lot of wind. Yeah, and it actually, before this race started, you see Kurt Busch coming back up on Jeff Gordon. And make the pass this time. But uh, they dealt with this, and, and it was actually a little different that to start this day that they didn't have any win because it had been affecting. They felt like Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So Kurt Busch back into the top 10. Jeff Gordon back to 11th. Ricky Stenhouse might have just gotten a piece of the wall in the 17 off of turn number two. Yeah, pretty good piece of it. Change that from Mike. Yeah. And Jeff scraped it too in that little skirmish with Kirk Bush. Just trying to see if that the very, very right rear corner part of the bumper there on the 24. That's the rip open it up. Yeah, that's yeah. a critical part of the car, too. They don't really want to damage that because it gives them a side force that they need. Dave? Well, Jeff, obviously, well, not obviously, understandably unhappy with Kurt Busch. He said so over the radio. But also as to the balance of the race car, he told his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, and whatever we did last time, it killed it tight. So right now the car not turning for Jeff. look too terribly bad at least at speed and from a camera distance on that uh, corner of the the 24 and as far as the adjustments and and so on there's a lot of frustration on top of those pit boxes not just behind the wheel because you're working as hard as you can to try and make the adjustments to make that driver happy and sometimes you do everything you know how to do and it it's just not not they're, getting there they're just not going to be happy we saw drivers like matt kenseth was leading the race for a whole segment and just not happy with his car. Well, Joey Logano is leading this segment of the race. He's pulled out to an even second lead on Juan Pablo Montoya with Paul Menard running third. Jimmy Johnson now taking fourth, kicking Jamie McMurray back to fifth. Jimmy trying to dig back out. Pit road open, Doc. Jimmy Johnson has taken right side tires two times in a row. He says the car a little edgy in dirty air, but once it gets settled in, it's very good in clean air. Jamie. Juan Pablo Montoya is saying he's just a little tight there, but he gets better as they run four tires here. They won't have to change lefts again. Dave? Kyle Busch just barely made it on this fuel run. They will change four tires, give him a wedge adjustment for a car that won't turn. Vince? 
Dave Letal, the front tire carrier on the 22, was, uh, went down on the previous stop. He's still out there. He's okay. It's a four-tire change for Logano, as many others on pit road change four as well. Not everybody, but a lot of them. And there are four lead lap cars who stayed out and are going to shuffle this running order up one more time. Reset it for the restart in a minute. opportunity game for the Jets after the Pats lost today. Oh, did they? Yeah, they did. Falcons need to win, try to keep up yeah, with the do. Saints. Yeah. So on a cool October afternoon here at Kansas Speedway, we're already nine cautions into this one, and another round of strategy has shuffled the running order again. Top four did not pit. Brad Kislowski, Denny Hamlin, Matt Kenseth, and Casey Kane didn't pit. Pile of right side tire and fuel only changes led by Kevin Harvick. The first on four tires was Joey Logano, who led going down pit road. He's now 13th for this restart. And as far as a fuel window is concerned, with all of these cars pit with now 94 to go. Yeah, it looks like that's inside a window to pit with one more stop. I mean, just to, to finish the race on one more stop. I'm not sure that these leaders that stayed out can, but the way we've seen these caution flags fly, I don't think we've seen the last one. his hands full in that first lap on the restart off of turn two. We've seen that from several people today. Jimmy Johnson a couple of times, but nice save by Menard. Yeah, it's like he ran up. He had a big run on Matt Kenseth, and I don't think Kenseth quite got back to the throttle. When you jump out of the gas, it's like these cars just take off then, and uh, Paul Menard did everything but crash. Did a nice job staying in this position there. Big knot there. Jeff Gordon on Pablo Montoya. Carl Edwards, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch. close man I was impressed what Kyle Busch did on that last run after they'd stayed out a couple of times and I was able to keep that car up in the the top five or six and evidently they're making good adjustments because the car looks better than it has all day crew chiefs are going to have to figure out what strategy is going to have them up towards the front whenever it comes time the end that you don't have to go to pit road again. Matt Kenneth, remember all the wholesale changes his team made after a repeated series of trips down the pit lane when he got a pit road speeding penalty. Matt had been up front leading this race a little bit, contending for a top spot, though describing his car as evil. -er. Though he e said that's not a word. Evilist, I think what he called it. Was it evilist? I don't know. <laughs> Doc, is it any less evilist? It actually is a bit better. I haven't heard him use the word evil for about a dozen laps or so. That's uh, that, And here's the best part. All those pit stops, Jason Ratcliffe now rolling the dice. They top it off on fuel on 157. They're going to try to make it on one more stop. Debris on the front stretch here. Just below the wide line. Right That's a problem. One of the cars involved in the many incidents today, shedding parts and pieces. I believe that came from the back of that car, Casey Mears. And that's what dislodged it. We've seen that quite a few times today. 
And then this. Tony Raines with the uh, free pass on this caution. And just watching the progress of Jimmy Johnson on that last uh, restart, who started uh, behind Joey Logano, but passed him. And Jimmy now the highest up of the guys who took four tires there running in ninth place. Interesting. If any of the uh, top uh, three decide to come down pit road here, they last stopped at 157. Can't see why they would. Since they uh, made the game, uh, made the game for track position with this uh, strategy. And I uh, don't expect they'll give it up here. So still got 86 laps to go in this one. Uh, we've had 10 cautions. Want to make a bold prediction on a total number? <laughs> Not me. Well, I think we see at least four more. I like it. You're always you're always ready to go out there and throw a number up. <laughs> <laughs> Those top three stayed out. Let's go NASCAR nonstop for Quicken Loans. Doubled up for the restart. It'll come with 83 laps to go. Brad Keselowski, the leader. Denny Hamlin to his inside. Championship contenders, Matt Kenseth running fifth. Jimmy Johnson running ninth. He was the real big mover in that last short run of racing. And Kyle Busch back in 19th. Denny Hamlin got loose. That forced Kevin Harvick up. He had a big run. Now this will get interesting. Yep. Look at Harvick drive that in to hold on to that spot. Wow. And what about Truex taking advantage? Johnson losing a few spots on a restart again. Oh, trouble! Kyle Busch and Juan Pablo Montoya. Lock her down, 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 lock her down. How did he get away with that? I don't know. I... It's like Mark Martin. That Mark Martin that I thought was going to run square into him right there. Yeah, Mark's. I think Mark got damage. the worst end of the deal. Yeah, let's see some damage also in the fixed drive of Brian Vickers. We've seen a couple of times, I mean, people going down onto the apron below that yellow line here is not an unusual thing. But today, two of them have been going down onto the apron, racing side by side. Watch this. And it just got too much. Yeah, that's, that's a chance you always take. Kyle was just trying to block Montoya there, who, who had a little bit of a run. See Mark Martin there. And he did a great job not to hit the 18, but he got the worst end of it. Well, I think if you're going to pick that side to block, Montoya would be about one of my last. And I, you know, that's a chance you take as a driver. You can block. There's no rules against it in NASCAR racing, but that's the, the chance that you take that that driver's not going to let out of the gas. Wow, A.J. Allmendinger doing a great job in that 47 car, too, not to get involved in that. Lock her down, 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 lock her down. Get her. 
getting intense. Championship contender Kyle Busch with a spin at Kansas. Been an eventful race here at Kansas Speedway. We catch up on some of what's gone down so far with our Darge Durango race rundown. Championship contenders have been involved in a number of things. Kyle Busch avoids a Danica Patrick crash on the opening laps of the race. And then just got turned around racing with Juan Pablo Montoya here for 17th place. Somehow got away with it. Jimmy Johnson was coming to pit road under the green when the caution came out. Went from the top spot in the race back into traffic, worked his way back up, lost some track position again. Jimmy right now running in 14th place. Matt Kenton speeding on pit road. Kicked him all the way back to 30th. They used some strategy to work him back up into the top four. He's down to seventh at the moment right now. Championship standings as they run, but as they run, it's uh, Matt Kenseth leading Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch by 15 and 34 points, respectively. But a lot of racings yet to go. A lap before, that was the uh, first apparently of the like I said if I was going to block somebody I think that'd be one of the last guys I'd block especially a guy that's not going to be even running this <laughs> next year and all he wants is to win and and frankly has had an attitude since he's been here of, you are not gonna mess with me. Yes. <laughs> so here we go again for another restart. And Brad Kozlowski now with Casey Kane to his inside. Remember, Denny Hamlin slipped last time. Well, Denny back in third. And you Junior's words are getting braver. and sliding again on the outside of turn two. Okay, just something in that setup that doesn't like the, the cold tires. I mean, the car is fantastic on the long runs, which we haven't had one in a while. Yeah. Three wide. Jim just trying to get himself back down to the bottom of the racetrack, keep from losing any more spots or to start trying to pick them off again. I think Kurt Busch done a great job of making up spots on these last few restarts. So Kozlowski and Harvick, one and two now. Earnhardt Jr. third, Kane fourth, and Menard fifth. Remember the big strategy shuffle a little while ago. Joey Logano has gotten back by Jimmy Johnson to be the first car that changed four tires last time that group pitted. After a few laps, this 48 comes alive, though. Yeah, the good thing for him and his fans are that once they get a few laps, he passes more cars than what he loses spots to. So he just needs not to see any caution flags where they have to have restarts. And you're thinking the likelihood of that is? <laughs> well, I already stated my case. I've got one of the four that I said we'd have. Yeah. 
Oh, there's one in trouble off turn two. It's Ambrose. And around. Caution. Lock her down. Lock her down. Lock her down. You're all right. Nothing's coming here. Just lock her down. All right, bring her to the road home. here. We, we got... Uh, I'll see, if, I'll see we that and raise you one. Officially make turn two the nationwide danger zone, I think. <laughs> Now, it's funny because the numbers said turn four at this racetrack has overwhelmingly been where people have had the most problems. Huh. Not today. So make that yellow number 12 for car nine in turn two. And you're basically just losing it over there. They're not getting any help. They're just, the cars are just jumping out from under these drivers. He was trying to wheel this thing to keep it going straight without spinning, but lost that battle. Spin ahead, spin ahead. So we're uh, racking them up today, up to a season high. And uh, figuring we've got a few more in the pocket. Still to go. And Jimmy Johnson's worst nightmare is another restart. Yeah. Just a few takers on pit road, mostly all from uh, toward the back of the pack. Jimmy Johnson darted like he was going down the pit lane, came back up on the racetrack. And right now, Jimmy running right behind his rival for the championship, Matt Kenseth. Been everything I can for you, Jason. I'm telling you, I'm just, uh, I just absolutely can't do any better for you, though. I reckon we've already used up eight of our lives here. <laughs> this tells you how treacherous it is on, on this tire and this track surface. Yeah, man, that has been Mr. Mile and a Half this year, and Mr. Kansas. Yeah. And conditions have continued to change through the day. Not just the rubber on the racetrack, but it's overcast all of a sudden. Sun had been out a lot of the day. Now it's a a full cloud cover overhead of this racetrack and the track temperature changing. Let's take a minute for unlimited access to the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup with NASCAR Mobile 13 and unlimited talk, text, and data on the Sprint Network. Eighteen lead changes, ten different drivers have paced this race. Kevin Harvick has by far led the most laps, 95 of the 197. Brad Keselowski, the one that's out in front right now, get unlimited access to the NASCAR Mobile 13 app with the unlimited MyWay plan, guaranteed for life and only from Sprint. See Sprint.com slash speed for details. Of course, this uh, Kansas track, the home track for series sponsor Sprint, headquartered here in uh, Kansas City. Let's check downstairs, Jamie. Paul Wolf, the crew chief for Brad Keselowski. You told me this morning this car would handle the best out in clean air. You're leading the race right now. How is the car and when do you guys need to pit? Yeah, obviously, I think everyone's seeing that. It's all about track position. And, and uh, we lost ours there early in the race and, and we're really struggling back there, but we we're able to get our strategy right, get back to the front, and now it seems like we're okay. So uh, everybody, I think one more stop from here can make it. So uh, I think once the window opens up, you see everybody come to pit road and uh, Hopefully we can keep the middle light uh, forward out front. All right, in that window right now, Alan, about 2.15. And remember, Brad Keselowski looking for his first win of the season. Well, Jamie, don't think they're going to have to worry about making that stop under the green. <laughs> At least if past trends are any indication. And a reminder as we get ready for the restart that the American Le Mans Series at Virginia International Raceway comes up at 5.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Plus tonight, the Auto Plus NHRA Nationals Finals from Reading, Pennsylvania, 8 Eastern, also on ESPN2. Next weekend, we race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Nationwide Series, Friday night, 7 Eastern, ESPN2, and the Bank of America 500, Race 5 in the Chase, Saturday night, 7 Eastern on ABC next weekend. What the story will be going into that race five in the chase depends on how these final 68 laps go in race four today at Kansas. And uh, the way the first 199 have gone, it's anybody's guess what's going to happen now. Yeah, importantly to Matt Kansas, he's been losing about one spot per restart here himself. He was up in the top five back to eighth right now. Kyle Busch into the wall. No doubt. Yeah, right. 
Brian Vickers also involved. Just fine and dandy. That thing's destroyed the front. The third place driver in the championship starting the day who We're started done. at the back in a backup car at a track that has been his worst statistically in his career. And it is indeed another bad day in Kansas for Kyle. running in 20th place. These restarts have been full of action and close calls. They're just flirting with danger on each one of these and talked about how they just continue to ramp up. So if there's some contact here. Oh yeah. Carl Edwards. And Vickers was down on the inside. Thought he was in a pretty good spot through that. But. not a situation that you can say because of the 99 getting in the 18 that that was Carl Edwards fault he was holding his line there that's just three wide racing and the chance that you take that's a hard hit hard angle it's again a testament to the safety of these vehicles and all the things that NASCAR has implemented over the years three to wide get what top. He can here. middle's covered three wide top Three wide. Yellow's out. Yeah, right. Really amazing how well the restraint systems work in these race cars after a hit like that. Pit stops. Just a few, Dave. They told Jeff, everybody comes in front of you, come on. And he did. Four tire change. The car was a little bit tight. They'll make an air pressure adjustment for that. And hopefully give just a little Jeff a little something he can pass cars with. Going to try and make a run to the finish from here, you think? Well, the amount of cautions we've had, and the lap, he has enough caution laps he can. Be interesting to see what happens. Yellow again. Kyle Busch in trouble. Well, Kansas Speedway has proven to be a very, very difficult for the drivers of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series today, and none perhaps more than Kyle Busch not just today but in recent years this was uh, last year Kyle turned around into the outside wall and a bad finish then back in the uh, April race not once but twice turned around and that one hurt then today the three wide into turn one on the restart contact there with Carl Edwards and a hard hit into the outside wall for Kyle Busch Kyle has been checked and released from the infield medical center Dave Alan walked out under his own power. Kyle, describe your day, starting with the last incident. What happened out there? I have no idea what happened on the last one. All I know is we're in Kansas, right? This has been a trend, unfortunately, for you. This place has still got you. Obviously. And uh, apparently everybody else does, too. Just run over the 18 car and get what you need. What about your championship hopes now? We've talked about mulligans in the past. Whether you get one, can you still come back, you think? Uh, we'll just have to work hard. We'll just have to keep doing what we've done and getting us to this point all year long. And that's been consistency. And every other track except Kansas seems to be able to bode well for us. So we'll see what happens. And um, if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. It wasn't meant to be. They fought hard starting at the back of the pack. It ends in a disappointing way for Kyle. I can't blame him for being upset because <laughs> this place just doesn't seem to work out for him. You know, unfortunately, as drivers, you, you find those, and it doesn't matter what you do, and sometimes the harder you try, the more problems you present for your for yourself and for your race team. Yeah, but the one thing that this team needed to do was just survive this race, just get out of here without that kind of result, and they still have a chance at winning the championship. Been one of those days. They did, uh, they worked the strategy to try and get some track position after starting at the back in a backup car, but... Uh, Things just haven't uh, haven't worked out for Kyle. And, and again, you know, as a race driver, you would be better able to explain the things that go on inside the race car. You can look at it and say, okay, why would you go three wide there when you're in that championship picture? But you are a race driver, and the mentality these days is get all you can as soon as you can. 
if you go back and you second guess it or you were to be asked for advice. Yeah, and we all approach these things a little bit differently. We know that Kyle likes to attack, and that's his mode. The other thing that probably led him to do that attacking, because you would think that knowing how treacherous the whole day is, that you don't want to put yourself in a three-wide situation on a restart. But knowing Kyle knowing that his race car wasn't very good for a number of reasons here, he felt like that was his opportunity to make a few spots, and, and knowing how hard it is to pass, he could get that. That's the, the route that he chose, and unfortunately, it bit him. That's what we said at the beginning of the show, is how this racetrack and this surface is penalizing drivers that are aggressive like that. And it's just, you know, it's unfortunate for Kyle that's really kind of taking him out of contention. And top off for Jeff Gordon, as we're set to go back racing now with 61 laps to go. Our U.S. Army look of a leader. Kevin Harvick almost tripling the number of laps anybody else has led today. But Brad Keselowski out in front now as we get toward the late stages of this one. Still got a lot of racing to go. We're just barely inside the final 100 miles. Jeff Gordon is going to restart back around 30th place. Obviously make it a play to not come to pit road again the rest of the race if he can. If we keep seeing the caution fly like it has been, I don't think he'll have to come back. He'll need about probably 10 or 12 caution laps to make it to the end. Brad Kozlowski went 57 laps on a tank of fuel here to uh, stretch the mileage and win this race a year ago. Oh, Junior with a big tire spin there. Cost him a lot of spots. Matt Kenseth and Joey Logano back there, the two yellow cars. Matt had to back out. Yeah, Kenseth really struggled. We're talking about Jimmy Johnson struggling on these restarts. Kenseth, I think, is even worse uh, now than what Jimmy Johnson been. He continues to lose spots. before that restart, looking at Dale Jr. and the spot he was sitting in there, restarting fourth, uh, that he was going to be in a, a pretty good spot to, to make a run at this thing once again. And all it takes is that one mistake in trying to get up to speed, spins the tires, gets himself in bad positions through a, a number of times there, and, and uh, this continues to, has continued to lose spots. Oh, well, yeah, big wiggle. You can see there, Brad Keselowski, he kind of slowed things down. Junior was kind of easing up there, had to slow down, and then as he tried to get back in it hard, that's when he really spun the tires. So third to 12th for Dale Earnhardt Jr. after that slip on the restart. Kyle Busch's car done for the day. 33rd place, might lose one more. Landon Castle is still on the racetrack and could uh, finish enough laps to overtake him. First couple laps after that restart, I was almost afraid to start talking about anybody because there was so much going on, I was waiting for a crash. But Brad Kozlowski and Kevin Harvey had a whale of a fight for that top spot. You could see and feel the urgency between them, and somehow Brad held Kevin off and squeezed ahead of him to hold on to the lead. I'll tell you, somebody else has done a great job on all these restarts and making a spot. Kirk Bush, his team, they lost a, a lot of spots on pit road. Back to 22nd on, a, on, I don't know which caution it was, <laughs> uh, but he has been making up spots, you know, in handfuls on these restarts. He's up to sixth place. And remember, Kurt started at the back of the pack in his backup car after he also had a crash here 
on Saturday. I'm looking right in front of him. There's Clint Boyer, who has complained about this car since Thursday's test session. Just shows they continue to work on it, got themselves in a position here. He's up in the top five, Jamie. That's right, DJ, in our qualifying on Friday, he said it was the worst car he has ever had at Kansas. It's a brand new machine. They worked on it all weekend, and to start this race, he wasn't good either, wasn't happy with the car. He has hung in there. They've adjusted. They've gone the right direction. Remember, this is his home track and mean nothing more than to go to victory lane for the 15. I'll tell you how bad it was. They had a full day of testing on Thursday for Friday morning's practice to start. It took him three runs before he could even make a lap with the car. They really have been struggling, but real impressed with what they've done so far. I still don't think the car is great, but they've made it better, and they've got in some track position. Interesting to see. We keep waiting on that part of the, the race where things kind of settle out, and are we going to get a longer green flag run once again towards the end of this race? Jimmy Johnson picking up a spot on Martin Truex, seventh place. If you could get a long green flag run, you might see this 48 car start yeah. to start to make up a lot of ground. Yeah, he's been the best in the long run. There's no doubt about that. But every time he gets a restart, he slips. And a few spots change hands. And him, uh, Dale Jr.'s made his way back inside the top 10 also. Able to make some passes. So both of those guys have good race cars. Kevin Harvick Whoa. had a run at Keselowski there, but had to check up. Yeah, had a run and almost had the wall. back before when Harvick got shuffled to the outside and drove into turn three, three wide. We hadn't seen anybody that high on the racetrack all day intentionally, no. and he made it stick. Now, Harvick's got a lot of confidence in this race car today. Vince, if he wins this race, that's a moment I'm really going to remember. Kevin Harvick, we're talking. Well, it's been a weekend to remember. I mean, after all, Kevin Harvick started on the pole in this race. First time he's earned pole position since 2006. You know, Gil Martin said that the gear and the RPM that they run here at Kansas is right in the sweet spot of their engine package. And that's why he feels like they've been so fast here this weekend. And also, Kevin is one of the best at taking care of the equipment, which is exactly what you got to do here to be good. Denny Hamlin gives up fourth for a green flag pit stop, Jamie. And Denny Hamlin, the team told me they needed to pit at lap 217. The car has been pretty good working in the right direction on this car as well. Left side's only a little hesitation just to get enough fuel in it to make it these remaining 49 laps. And that was 60 laps for Denny Hamlin since his last pit stop. Obviously had a lot of caution laps in there. Yeah, quite a few see if they can work the strategy now to find a way to get back some track position. But some other cars are going to have to make a green flag stop really quickly. It's uh, the two of Brad Keselowski, Matt Kenseth, uh, looks like Casey Kane as well, all pitted on lap 157. So they're 60 plus laps now since their last pit stop. Creeping in on these top two, Paul Menard. Pretty consistently had the number one lap time on the board. We talked about earlier in the race how this track surface really fits his driving style. That's where I was going. It, you know, statistically, his one of his best tracks in the, on the NASCAR Sprint Cup circuit on the NASCAR Nationwide Series too. Yeah, and you talk about what we talk about. You see Jeff Gordon taking the spot from here comes Kinsley to pit road. Yep. But to talk about how this is Kyle Busch's nemesis. Well, Paul Menard loves to see this race to come up to them. Kenseth pits from 16th place, Doc. 63 laps on these tires. He last pitted on lap 157. He said, it is so loose, I just can't drive it. I'm hanging on. Major chassis adjustment. It'll be four tires. they got to get it full of fuel. This will be the last stop they make today. Trying to go out and just salvage a good finish here. I wonder if it's a rough afternoon. And while Kenseth's on the pit lane, another spot for Jimmy Johnson. That's fourth place from Clint Boyer. Got a little green flag running going here in that 48, eating him up. You know, the last time that they were on pit road, they got four tires, so that's a good thing for this 48 car as they, they run on a little bit longer here. 
puts him in position to take uh, a shorter stop and just a couple of tires if uh, that stop is either under green or caution. I'd say under, if he can do it under green, I think that he'll be getting four tires again uh, because that'd be a lot of time to, to be putting on those left side tires. But you never know. Number of laps left and how much fuel yeah. under the green, yes. less time you spend. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm impressed with the fuel mileage on this two car. Yeah. For the lead, Kevin Harvick with a look. And by. Brad's been 66 laps so far. On Coming now, I believe. Yep. He's not out of fuel. 39.50. Now, if, it, if it's out, that's a mistake. I believe he's out. He's weaving, weaving it. Back yeah. forth. You have to be really careful yeah. if you're injured. Out, out, out. Didn't give me a warning. Wow, Jamie, that's tough. Yes, it is. Definitely out of gas. He made that call. I'm out of gas coming in now. The team is on the wall and ready. But remember, he didn't make the chase. They were willing to take risk. Paul Wolf told me we're going to run as long as we can. If we run out of gas, we run out of gas. There's nothing to lose. We have to win, and that's it till the end of the season. So they'll go ahead and put tires on it there. Put as much gas as he can. See if he can refire it here. Taking a little more time to get enough fuel in the car. 42 laps to go. Trying to fire it up. Having difficulty right now. Oh, this has got to be heartbreaking for him. Who just gave up the lead. Meanwhile, the 29 continues to dominate. He's got it fired. And there he goes. Alan. I understand gambling and trying to win a race. But to trying to stretch that particular run, I don't think was very smart. I think that you know everybody's got a pit another time so why stretch that one and risk running out of fuel and having this so this is like taking them out of it this has been the kind of year they've had though yeah so Kozlowski not a factor anymore Martin Truex just on it off the pit road on the green checking for debris and the caution's out. There it is, just hit out, by somebody. Out. Might have been the 30 car that uh, hit whatever that was. Cole Witt sitting there down into turn one. Could play right into Jeff Gordon's hands. There's your four more cautions you were talking about, Dale. So we're going to at least have that many. Wow. Whatever that was, left a mark. Sure did. When they picked it up and carried it away. Still wrapped around that front splitter of the 30 car. So, 14th caution of the race. 39 laps to go. Pit stops coming. Four tires or two. Expecting the 24 to stay out, play his hand. And the thing here is a lot of these cars are low on fuel. You know, so it's about the lowest the fuel tank's been to take the two tires. They're going to need oh, 39 laps to go. Yeah, you might be able to get two tires here and enough fuel. I've got to make sure that you get enough. If you're going to get in there, you might as well have enough for a green-white checker. The way this stays <laughs> yeah. going. Yeah. Or, or yeah. more than one. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Well, the old phrase, the money stop. Here it is. Yep. And the money call by uh, the guys on top of the pit box. Sure seeing Jeff Gordon line up like he's coming to pit road. I really thought they were setting themselves up to stay out here. He is coming in. He won't be there long, though. Wow. Doc? Jimmy Johnson sent a little free off turn four. Jack and now says stop in the back of the box so we don't get blocked in. They took four last time. Got to believe they're going to go two this time. Two right side tires, chassis adjustment, and get it full of fuel. Jamie. Mm -hmm. Slugger Labby making the call for Paul Menard. Right sides only is the call. Enough fuel to get him through. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer in the 15. Right side tires, they put enough fuel in. 8.6 seconds, Vince. For Kevin Harvick, they've got to get 15 gallons of fuel. That means they put a second can in. It's in already. Right side tires only, and the 31 is the first car off pit lane. 
You see Jeff Gordon gained eight spots. He didn't have to wait on fuel because his tank was fairly full. He took two quick right sides, jumped out there, got the track position. And when you were watching Jimmy Johnson's team let the car down slowly because they were still fueling it, and then when they had the number of seconds of fuel in the car, they sent him on his way. Thirty-six laps to go at Kansas Speedway, and our aerial coverage for today's race is provided by Goodyear. Everything we learn making tires that face the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. After today, we move on to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Saturday night, 500 miler. The remaining races in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. There they are, where you can find them on television and where you can find them to come join us at the track. Hmm. NASCAR.com slash tickets. What a variety and what an interesting next six weeks it should be. Yeah, that's what I look at is the variety of different tracks and what is going to bring us fast next Saturday night at Charlotte. Though. That's for sure. So double up for the restart. Jeff Burton first off the pit lane. Fuel only the call by Luke Lambert. Kevin Harvick to his inside. Look who's lined up on the outside of the second row. Marcus Ambrose. After his big spin. Yep. Put them on a strategy to come in last yep. time and do less this time. Jimmy Johnson goes from third to 14th by spending an extra second or two waiting on fuel. Don't no worry, man. It's all good. Oh, no, it's, it's not. It's not. And Matt Kenseth just took a wave around back onto the lead lap along with Denny Hamlin, Casey Kane, and Martin Truex. Matt showing in 30th place. Five to go. Jeff Gordon's going to have a chance to win this race. He's going to have to clear Jeff Burton right now. He did that. Now his big challenge is trying to catch that 29 that not many people have when he's been out front today, but there's his challenge. Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr., 11th place. Jimmy trying to make up a lot of spots in a short period of time. Menard, great move off the high side of turn two. Picking up eighth place on Clint Boyer. That's 11th and 12th for Dale Jr. and Greg Biffle. Jr. sliding in front of Biffle to pick up that spot. Yeah, Biffle just had pretty much an awful day oh. here. Kurt Busch. That's fifth place. What a drive for Kurt today. I know there's a point in the race Jeff Gordon might not necessarily agree with that. But <laughs> what a drive for Kurt from the back to top five. Yeah, it really has been you know, pretty spectacular to watch him maneuver traffic, make passes. Looks like he was getting himself in trouble a couple of times, but here he is inside the top five late in the race. Jimmy Johnson trying to continue to pick him up as quickly as he can. That's around Paul Menard to pick up eighth place. He's marching. After the race, Sports Center comes up here on ESPN while we run out the rest of the race. Reminds you that Sports Center is airing on ESPN News. And we continue here from Kansas Speedway. As eventful a day as this race four of the chase has been, who knows what's going to happen in these final 
30 laps. I don't know. If we see this battle, Jimmy Johnson's still marching forward. I do know the guy in second, Jim Gordon's running his fastest laps of the day, trying to run down Kevin Hart. many points as he can in the final lap since the restart 10 spots well, Ambrose is wheeling this number nine and hanging on to that four spot yeah about four laps ago Kirk Bush actually called him and I thought it was going to go around him pretty easily but Ambrose not giving up we see Jimmy Johnson picking up another spot in sixth place here goes Kirk Bush to fourth. Funny how all the people now at the front of the pack, almost all of them, had circumstances that trapped them at the back of the pack. At one point in the race, whoop, Ambrose up the track. Jimmy Johnson scoots by him. And Kevin Harvick dominated the opening stretch of this race. Jeff Gordon was uh, up there in the opening stretch of the race. They both made a pit stop under the green flag. And then the caution came out, trapping them the lap down. They had to take a waiver out and put them all the way at the back of the pack. They had to work the strategy to get their track position back. And right now, they're first and second, Dave. And as for the 24, Alan Gustafson was very confident about his race car this morning. If we could get it just comfortable enough on this racetrack. They did that, and as you mentioned, played the strategy right. And Jeff was reminded as we went back to Green Allen that he had the freshest left side tires. Now, I didn't check everyone on pit road, but he changed those lefts on lap 204, and they are pretty darn good. Vince? Well, the only issue that Kevin Harvick has had in the uh, last third of the race is he was a little too free in and a little too free on exit. But the car is much better now. Harvick rolling right along. Remember, he's the only non-Gibbs driver to win a race on a mile and a half track this season. That was at Charlotte, and we go there next week. Trouble turn two, Brian Vickers. Caution flag is out, a hard crash for Brian. Around on him. I don't know if he cut a tire or not. Window net down. Driver signal to the officials that he's okay. see right here is Brian Vickers. He's sideways. It looks like he's trying to save it. Oh my, look at this little. Oof. Wow. Matt Kenseth scooting by there. What a terrible crash. And that's just what's happening. Yeah, with this tire and this track combination. When those cars, when they break loose, they just snap around. Wow, look at Truex and Casey Kane dodging there. Yeah, they snap, and, and anything that the drivers try to do to try to correct that just makes an overcorrection, and we've seen that. We saw it with Danica on the very first lap of the race. Uh, we saw it yesterday in practice with Kyle Busch, and a number of times we, we've seen it here today. Justin Allgaier earlier on in this race. Yeah, what we see is the car gets sideways, they, the drivers correct, and right as it starts to come back, it really hooks hard to the right, and that's you know, the driver just can't keep up with that. Well, what has been a trouble-filled day here at Kansas Speedway continues, changes the picture for the final laps, the 15th caution of the race, now a record for this Speedway for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And we started our telecast Oh, about uh, 360 miles ago or so, saying we expected this could be a day that uh, might turn into calamity for some, and uh, it has proven well true. 
Yeah, it's just a, a, a tough combination. Uh, you, you have the speed of a mile and a half racetrack, a very smooth track, but it has the grip's gone away a lot, and, and the, the new tire combination has just thrown these drivers and teams for a, a big curve, and uh, it's been very difficult for them. Jimmy Johnson sitting fifth. You're fast. We do not have to worry about gas, right? 29, he's worried about gas. It's going to be interesting. Uh, we are not concerned about fuel at all. So you're going to be able to go like hell. You're going to be able to keep your tires good for him. I find that fascinating because when Jimmy sat there and waited that extra couple of, of, of seconds there for gas on the pit lane, that's what was kind of confounding Chad Knauss, I think. Well, if we had to do that, how come all these other people didn't? Well, did they take the chance that they got enough fuel in to make it? Yeah, they were timing the fuel. These other cars that knew that it was going to be important to stay on pit road the least amount of time. So they were timing their fuel to run the 39 laps or so that they had left. Well, when that came out, it, when the caution came out right there, well, the way Jimmy Johnson was passing cars and moving forward, his biggest obstacle right now from winning this race, Kevin Harvick's fast out front, but the restart that he gets here, if he doesn't lose any spots here, I think that he drives on to, to, the win, to win this race. And uh, we'll see. His problems have been when he started on the outside. He's going to be on the inside this time. And we'll see if he can get this car up to speed and stay in, in touch with uh, Harvick and Gordon on this restart. I tell you, what I'm going to be watching is Kurt Busch. He's been passing these cars on the outside of all these restarts. Well, 21 laps to go. The cleanup continues off turn number two. And after all the action we've seen today, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Let's check in out of the Quick and Loans ESPN Pit Studio. Hi, Nicole. Hey there. You think there's a lot to talk about? A lot of drivers <laughs> in play as well. We were just sitting down here talking about, you know, drivers we wanted to, to point out. And I think you guys listed off about six, seven, eight of them. But let's start with Kurt Busch because he's had a very good comeback today. He's had a great comeback. I'm really happy with him. I mean, here's a guy that's been controversial for a long time in his career. It takes extreme patience to run this racetrack today. And this guy's not known for extreme patience. But he's up there running fourth right now. And he's came from two laps down at one point to be up there in fourth. And right now in the hunt for the victory, I tell you, this guy's made a big turn, in my opinion. He's looking really good out there today, Brad. Hey, what about the guy who's been consistent? Consistently running some of the fastest laps on the trap. That is number 24, Jeff Gordon. Yes, sir. The guy who got into the chase at the last moment. He is contending for a victory today. Jeff Gordon wins this race today. He is a serious threat. And really to win that likes title. their strategy too. Yeah, it's absolutely. Big strategy play by the 24. Great job. Did, did a good long. job. As a matter of fact, if he wins, you should get out your Jeff Gordon T-shirt. <laughs> but you know what, what I'm looking at. Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals. They had a little issue on pit road. Chad was a little excited. Jimmy calmed him down. He's driven that car. He restarted in 14th position just a few laps ago. Doc, what's going on with Chad Canals right now? Well, let's find out from Chad right here. Chad, uh, you, you purposely waited to get the car full of fuel. Is that going to pay off for you now? Well, we can definitely make it to the end of the event, and there's been a lot of cautions. Uh, I'd have to say the potential for a green-white checker is there, so we wanted to be conservative and and make sure we can make it to the end. The low Chevrolet is super fast today. Jimmy's done an amazing job driving the car through traffic. We've had some really, really bad restarts. Really by no fault of our own, just to kind of the wrong place at the wrong time. But uh, really proud of the way this team's performed today and the race car, and I think Jimmy's doing a great job. They burst. With Alan Gustafson, Harvick has been fast. What's working most in Jeff's favor at the end here, Alan? Well, these restarts are going to be hairy. I think getting a good restart, keeping them close is, the, is what we've got to do. Uh, you know, I think we can do it. We just gotta gotta keep them close. Re restarts are just crazy, so hopefully we'll get a good one. There's one coming up, Vince. Restarts definitely key. Gil Martin, how good is Kevin Harvick's race car right now? It's pretty good. It likes the front. I mean, our Budweiser Chevrolet's been strong out front all day long. Everybody struggled in traffic a little bit, but if we can uh, just get a good restart right here and get that high line rolling, uh, we'll see what happens. Alan. Gil Martin working the strategy to get Car Kevin Harvick back his track position after getting trapped by that caution earlier in the race. Yeah, you got to give him a lot of credit because this car wasn't just, you know, average in, in traffic. It was terrible. Yeah. He Harvick, did a good job of getting back up front. Yeah, Harvick's done a great job, but he'll be able to thank his crew chief uh, for keep giving him this opportunity. Free pass at the caution to Brad Keselowski back on the lead lap, 30th place. Matt Kenseth is running 15th. Jimmy Johnson is running fifth. Kyle Busch is out of the race, showing 35th. Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon side by side for the race lead. Pace cars off, 19 laps to go. See, 
Gordon was having to be more concerned with keeping Carl Edwards behind him. Wasn't able to get the angle into turn one that he wanted. Fighting with Kurt Busch for second. Letting Harvick get away. Look at Kurt Busch drive that car in the corner. Made it stick. Comes Logano taking the fourth spot away. So now it's Kurt Busch chasing Kevin Harvick. At Stenhouse just off the pit lane on the apron. Johnson doesn't have it rolling yet, has not been able to get by Carl Edwards and pick up fifth place. Johnson losing one on that restart. Harvick's been amazing when his car's out front. I mean, these lap times he's running are incredibly fast. It's a belt off of somebody's car. Drive belt that was just rolling around. Got hit. Johnson oh, going for fifth. Yep. Yeah, he spent a lot of time there trying to take that spot away and get back into the top five, though. Two and a half seconds behind Harvick. Now, Harvick. Harvick. Sorry, 15 to go. Yeah, and I was going to say, Harvick got a lot of questions during the week. You know, what do you do? You're sitting there, watch these top three perform at such a high level. How do you get back in this championship battle? He's shown today, lead the most laps, be out front when it counts. Jeff Gordon, another terrific drive, another terrific race, not trouble-free, but here in these late laps, just searching for an answer, finding or trying to find a way to win. I guess what I've seen from Jeff Gordon in these last several weeks is, despite the ups and downs of their season, being in a position to try and win some races earlier in the year and having things get away and so on, uh, even though there is talk of Jeff being closer to the end of his career, uh, certainly than the middle, let's say. Uh, he's, he's not giving up on anything and not giving up anything to anyone. I don't think he's giving up on this championship this year either. I mean, he keeps just falling his way, trying to get back in it, even though those top three coming into here have been so stellar. But the way they're running right now, he's only 31 points out of the lead. No, this man has so much talent, and he's got drive and ambition still in him, even though he's accomplished so much in this sport. He still wants to, to run well, and he still wants to go to victory lane. It just shows how tough it is out here, though. Yeah. You know, it's not just – we thought it was Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch the only ones you had out one. Now you got Kirk Busch up there and Kevin Harvick having a stellar day. So you just never know from week to week who it's going to be. Just incredible competition. Jimmy Johnson trying to pass Joey Logano for fourth place. Matt Kenseth back in 12th. And just while we watch this, to, to, to finish up the thought on, on Jeff Gordon, it's hard to stay at the peak of performance in any sporting competition for the period of time that Jeff Gordon has. And uh, to still be a, this number of years into his career and be performing at the level that he is, is uh, all credit to him. Jimmy Johnson. Took that restart a little while ago back in 14th place. Not, not the last one, the, the second to last one. <laughs> the, the restart from the 14th caution, not the 15th. And if you were to go back and do a, a line trace of his day, the number of positions he passed on long green runs and the number of spots he gave up in the first couple of laps after a restart, when he had to restart in the outside lane, I'm not sure that uh, Jimmy hasn't had maybe one of the best average running positions all day, set Kevin Harvick aside, but just that up and down has been just a little too much to overcome. 
Yeah, it really has. And, you know, I don't know. He, his car looked so fast before that last caution. He was really picking them off. And, uh, you know, he had passed Joey Logano and drove away from him. I don't know if the car just not quite as good this time or if maybe the weather changing even more, getting cooler yet, that's, has helped some of these others. But uh, it's been tougher for him to get going on this restart and make anything. He's sitting there in fifth. It's going to be a solid day, but Matt Kenseth's back there picking him up, putting him down. So he's almost driven his way up into the top ten, which is probably going to keep the points lead for him. Two seconds. Kevin Harvick to Kurt Busch. A trouble-filled day at Kansas Speedway. Longest green flag stretch of the entire day was 40 laps. Had a record number of yellow flags for this racetrack. And the big headline of the day, besides who wins the race, is that Kyle Busch was involved in a nasty crash at lap 199. Three wide into turn one on restart. Contact there with Carl Edwards and a heavy hit into the outside wall for Kyle Busch. He's going to finish this race in 34th or 5th positions, depending on how things play out over the final laps. His brother, Kurt, started last in a backup car, is running second. He gets our nod today for the Goodyear Superior Performer. Yeah, he's earned it today, that's for sure. He and his team. Yeah. yeah. He had, had a little pickup on a pit stop or two, but Kurt Busch was able to just drive by cars one after another after these restarts and get this track position back. And, you know, let's, I remember hearing some radio I believe it was from Jimmy Johnson's team saying they didn't know if Harvick could make it on fuel. These have been the fastest laps of the race, and that uses a lot of gas. You know, it's only five laps to go. That might be the only thing that will keep Harvick from winning this thing. Though. Look how far out he is. Initially got a, got a break of one second while Gordon and Kurt Busch raced for second place. Stretched that out to two seconds. Now 2.2 seconds. And four laps to go. Harvick had the win at Atlanta just before the start of the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Opened his chase with a third place run at Chicagoland, but then finished 20th at New Hampshire. Gave up a chunk of ground. And after his sixth place at Dover last week, you can look back at that New Hampshire race as saying, you know, what if? So a lot of racing to go, though. Harvick's team is really peaking at the right time. Yeah, it does that. And, you know, we talk about that wild card race at Talladega. Harvick is one that usually keeps himself out of trouble and puts himself in a position to win that race when a lot of others have problems. Documented well, Kevin Harvick in the quote-unquote lame duck season at Richard Childress Racing announced that he was moving on. Would they be able to keep it together? Would they be pulling the rope in the same direction all the way to the end of the year? Kevin downplayed those reports right away. And certainly they're proving it on the racetrack. Something wrong with Jimmy Johnson? Yep, suddenly dropping back, slowing way down. Yeah, baby, you need a lap and a half, man. Just take care of it best you can. Troubles developing under the hood as the white flag is out. Final lap for Kevin Harvick. Jimmy Johnson running in fifth. How many positions does he give up in the final lap? Matt Kenseth's running 11. Well, they started up front, dominated the early part of the race, fell back. Worked the strategy, got back to the front, and Harvick did the job on all these late restarts, and Kevin Harvick wins at Kansas. Jimmy Johnson gets through to the finish, only losing one spot in that final lap. He falls to sixth place at the checkers. Matt Kenseth takes the checkered flag in 11th position. And Gil Martin and company, what a day here at Kansas. Yeah, I gotta hand it to Gil Martin. He engineered a great victory today. Looks like driving two different cars from front to back. Great job. 
Got him in the hunt. And the call to not hit to get Kevin Harvick his track position back. Back at lap 139. That put Kevin back up front. You heard him say just there what a different car it was when he was back in traffic versus when he was up front and had a shot at that clean air. Remember that issue that Jimmy Johnson had, his car cleared back out and he was able to pick speed back up once he got behind Carl Edwards and ended up only losing that one spot. Very fortunate there. Dodged a major bullet. Yeah. Wow, what a run Harvick had. Man. That was incredible to watch him out front all day just negotiate this place. Yeah, it's unbelievable how fast that car was when he would get out front and get that clean air. He was back in traffic. I mean, he was just another car. He couldn't hardly pass anybody. Gil Martin did such a great job to figure out a way to get that clean air back. spoke earlier I said Kevin won at Atlanta it was Charlotte that he won at the uh, 600 what a job Kurt Busch and Kurt and Jeff going to talk it over yeah their little issue there earlier in the race I'm sure they're talking about how the car got tied and they just kind of sent them both out things get a lot better when you end up finishing second and third you can talk these things out yeah and I think they have a lot of respect for each other yeah no doubt Conversation was taking a turn from. Uh, yeah, it was going pretty good, and then all of a sudden it looked uh, like they were starting to disagree on a few points. But Jeff wasn't buying all of that, exactly <laughs> what was being explained to him. Well, they may agree to disagree. Matt Kenseth, you saw Matt and Jimmy. Matt finished 11th today. Jimmy finished 6th. And after race 4 in the chase, it's pretty close up top. Unfortunately for Kyle Busch, he falls all the way back to 5th place and 35 positions down. Kyle finishing 34th here today. Dave? Matt is still the championship leader, even with the evilest of race cars today. Describe your day, Matt. Is that a new word? I made that up. You coined it. I think it's good. It was just, uh, it was a struggle all day. Even, even when we were in front, it was, a, it was a struggle. We just, um, I've been so incredibly spoiled this year. I haven't had to drive a car like that in a long time. So this, everybody's on the same tires. So you can't really blame that. But it was just, it was just incredibly treacherous, and um, I, I was just so loose. I was ready to crash, pretty much at all times of the race. So Jason did a nice job. Um, with some strategy calls, and I, I still lost all our track position. But good adjustments at the end. We had a better. We drove back to 11th, which uh, definitely isn't what we want or what we need to contend for this thing. But it was a it was a good save for as bad as we were. Matt Kenseth, 11th today. Alan. Well, while Matt Kenseth is the championship leader on top of the standings at the end of 400 miles at Kansas Speedway today is Kevin Harvick. Your winners in victory lane. He started on the pole, he led the most laps, and he brought it home and parked it in victory lane. What a dominating performance for you today. Kevin, what's it say about this team to make this statement in the chase the way you did today? Well, I just first off, I just want to thank everybody from Sprint. This is a, a huge race for everybody uh, in this town. Budweiser Ream, Jimmy John, Chevrolet, Bad Boy Buggies, Realtree, everybody that helps this, this uh, Chevrolet. Um, these guys just did a great job all weekend. I mean, to have a car fast enough for me to qualify it on the pole says, says a lot to, uh, to how fast this thing is. So we're just uh, really excited to be here and, and in front of uh, everybody from Sprint and, and going to St. Louis tomorrow. Uh, just really excited. I want to say hi to Dwayne and Keeler and home. With just under 100 laps to go, you're running 16th. You come in and Gil calls for fuel only, no tires, and it got you track position and put you back up front. How big was that for you? 
Well, for, for me, I was, you know, it was like driving two different cars. Um, you know, we got that debris caution right as we pitted there early. Um, and, and we got back in traffic and the car was just really tight. And then we got better as, as the cloud cover came over and, and we kind of found the, that middle line down there in one and two and, and they kept me calm. I was, I was getting, starting to get a little bit wound up because I knew we had a really fast car out front, but just a matter of getting there because track position was so important. So it was a good day and just, um, just happy as heck for everybody on this team. Kevin Harvick wins at Kansas and we're going to Charlotte next where he won in May. Jamie? And Jimmy Johnson is out of the car, an issue there with one lap to go. Jimmy, explain what was going on under the hood with your car. You only lost one spot, and you're three back in the points now, but what happened there on the last lap? Yeah, I mean, all in all, it's just a crazy day with, you know, uh, uh, weird restarts, wacky restarts, a lot of chaos there, and then caution after caution for who knows what. And just cautions kept coming out, and they hurt us each time. Um, so we rebounded from all that, passed a ton of race cars, and then on the last lap, uh, I guess two to go, coming down the back, it started shaking real bad, and I thought, thought it was over. But uh, I limped it around and got it to the finish line, and I, I started running again down the back, coming to the checkered, so I was able to at least maintain over uh, whatever seventh, whoever was in seventh there, and, and get it back. So went through a lot today, <laughs> overcame a lot today. Very happy and proud of the slows team. Um, you know, got a little points on the 20, put a bunch on the 18. In the scheme of things, it was a, a very good day for the slows team. It was a good day, and the racing gods were on his side there on the last couple of laps. Doc? And a great day for his teammate, Jeff Gordon, finishing third. And Jeff, a good day on the racetrack. In spite of a disagreement, maybe on the track and off, take us through what happened with you and Kurt Busch. Well, first of all, it was a great day for us, Exalta uh, Chevy SS team. You know, Alan and the guys, just, they, ever since the chase started, they have been bringing me, you know, awesome race cars. And we're having a lot of fun out there. And everything could have gone wrong for us today. And actually there at the end, it went right. So that's nice to have. Uh, yeah. It's not a NASCAR race if you don't have a discussion with a race and with another driver out there about an incident on the track. And you know these restarts were so tough out there. Uh, every, everybody's just trying to get every position they, they could. And I got in the outside lane there one time, and and he just came up. And uh, the next lap, I got to his bumper and got him loose. And I guess that that um, kind of led to him wanting to run into me on the right side uh, on my door. You know these cars are so sensitive aerodynamic wise. Uh, you just can't have any little damage like that. And it did seem to affect our car. But no, I just wanted to you know have a good civil conversation with, with Kurt and we did and he did a great job so did uh, Kevin and uh, we're, we're really proud to, to finish third today. Jeff Gordon let's go to Dave Burns. With second place Kurt Busch uh, we just talked to Jeff he said uh, the day ended with a civil conversation between the two of you describe your day including racing with the 24 on the track today. Well we finished second I think that's the most important thing the way that our furniture row team has found speed at these mile and a half wish we could have cashed in you know Harvick our teammate with RCR they won Congratulations to them. I, I feel like it's just like this 5% we're missing. And without that 5%, we got to battle hard. We got to battle on restarts and gain spots when we can. And restarts were treacherous today. And that's where the 24 and I raced really hard today. He was on the outside, you know, hook, hooked his nose right on our rear spoiler. And I was just sliding. And he thought I was pinching a bump into the wall. And I'm like, no, you got to give an inch to get an inch. And then it just turned into a bit rough, rough play. But you know, with the important thing about us finishing second and third, that's when it's good racing. And there doesn't need to be the media to blow it out of proportion and to say two guys are fighting. We need to put on a better show. We need to have better tickets for our fans to buy. And I hope we put that on back there. It's a great show. Second place, Kurt Busch. Alan. Dave, thanks. And a reminder that coming up later tonight on ESPN2, you can see the final eliminations of the Auto Plus NHRA Nationals from Reading as the countdown to the championship for the NHRA Series continues. That's 8 Eastern ESPN2. Next weekend, fight for the Nationwide Series Championship goes to Charlotte Motor Speedway, 7 Eastern Friday night on ESPN2. And the Bank of America 500 is race five in the chase for the NASCAR Spring Cup, another fast mile and a half next Saturday night at Charlotte on ABC. How do you wrap this one up? <laughs> well, we talked about what was going to happen, and it was exciting throughout the day. But, uh, you know, Kevin Harvick had the fastest car all weekend. He brought it to Victor Lane. Yeah, it was as crazy as we thought it was going to be. Uh, we saw all these spins and incidents in practice, and we thought it was going to carry over. It did. But Kevin Harvick and Gil Martin did a great job to bring it home in first. 15 cautions for 71 laps today. That's a new track record for caution flags and the most we've had during the course of this season. And the big story of the day, besides Kevin Harvick winning, Kyle Busch involved in a big crash, and Kyle finishes in 34th position and falls from third in the championship down to fifth position. 
Virtual draw for Kenseth and Johnson atop the points, and it's on to Charlotte next after Kevin Harvick wins on a Sunday in Kansas.